Entertainment and Sports Network. few days of spring training. In fact, after tonight's ball game, only one more game here at Steinbrenner Field during spring training. Players going through their paces. Final week, getting ready for the real deal next Friday against the Rays. As tonight, the Yes Network presents New York Yankees baseball. It's going to be the New York Yankees against the Philadelphia Phillies from Steinbrenner Field here in Tampa, Florida. Hi everybody, Ken Singleton along with David Cohn once again tonight. The Yankees and the Phillies are underway and Michael Pineda is going to get the start for the Yankees tonight. The big right-handers had a pretty good spring, but what can you expect from him tonight, David? You know, there's been a lot of squawking about his velocity and how come he's not lighting up the radar gun, but he's been working all spring on his rhythm. You see that full old school wind up over the head. A lot of change-ups this spring, some sliders. His velocity's been creeping up up to 94 his last start. I expect him to continue to get better. I think he's right on track. I like his delivery. I think Pineda's going to be just fine. Let's check out his numbers from this spring. You can see how he's been stretched out his last start five innings five hits he's had about a strikeout per inning this spring that's what he did last year as a rookie with the Seattle Mariners so Pineda gets a start for the Yankees tonight you have two of the top teams in baseball last year's winners of the National League East the Philadelphia Phillies against the American League East winners the New York Yankees we got them coming up next stay tuned Yankees and Phillies on yes
Tonight's Game on Yes is brought to you in part by Chevy. With a full line of award-winning models, find out more at ChevyOffers.com. Buy Wendy's. Head to Wendy's and try one of our W double cheeseburgers. Dig into the W today. And by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. Well, the fans headed to their seats here at Steinbrenner Field. The Yankees and the Philadelphia Phillies be underway in just a few moments here. In fact, the Yankees have taken the field. And Michael Pineda will be in the middle of the diamond taking his final warm-up tosses. It is get to face a, a lot of the Philly regulars tonight. Charlie Manuel sends over his A team. And the Phillies will have Juan Pierre, the speedy one, at the top. He'll be in left field. Shane Victorino, the flying Hawaiians in center. They got a lot of speed. Jimmy Rollins will be the shortstop batting third. Jim Tillman, future Hall of Famer, will be the designated hitter. He bats fourth. Hunter Pence will be in right field. Placido Polanco will be in third. Ty Wigginton will be at first tonight. Carlos Ariz does the catching. And batting ninth is the second baseman, Freddie Galvis. You're looking at Charlie Manuel, the winningest manager in Philadelphia Phillies history. Michael Pineda. See, last year with the Mariners, he made 28 starts, 9 and 10 record. They didn't get a lot of run support. The ERA is good. He had a great first half. You see 133 hits and 171 innings. He is hard to hit. We'll give you the Volkswagen pitcher scout report. He's getting stronger. A lot of talk we said in the opening about uh, his velocity. Uh, he creeped up to 94 his last one. I think part of that reason is he's been working on that changeup, and it's looked good this spring. And the thing I like, Kenny, is no interpreter. You know, he, he's trying to, to, to trying to communicate with the media on his own without any help. I really admire that. I think that's a great move in New York for this young right-hander. Let's check out the Yankees on defense brought to you by the Home Depot. Let's start the outfield from left to right. You got Speedy Brett Gardner in left, Curtis, Gr Curtis Granderson in center. And Justin Maxwell gets to start in right field tonight. Rodriguez, Jeter, Cano, and Chavez round out the infield. And Russell Martin doing the catching for Michael Pineda. So both teams with the regulars in the lineup tonight. Juan Pierre. The active leader in stolen bases with 554 during his career. The Philly signed him as a minor league free agent over the winter. He's trying to hook on as a fourth or fifth outfielder. An excellent bunter, Alex Rodriguez, just about reach out and shake hands with Juan Pierre. It's time for baseball, and the first pitch is maybe a little bit high for ball one. And Juan Pierre was added to the 40 man roster, so uh, he has made this team and talked to Charlie Manuel before the game. Pitch is lined by Jeter in the left field for a base hit. Pierre is on. So that is what he has done over many, many years as a leadoff hitter. He's an excellent butter. Slashes the ball to the opposite field for yet another base hit. And he's looking across the diamond at third base coach Juan Samuel to see if anything's in the offing here in the early going. Here's Shane Victorino. Three time gold glove winner in center field for the Philadelphia Phillies. Pierre's got a good lead. He's going to draw some attention to throw immediately over the first to send it back to first base. Big start for Pineda tonight. Trying to impress just one more time here in spring training. Pitch is hit on the ground towards the hole. It's going to be on in the right field for a base hit. Juan Pierre gets the second. He's going to hold on there as Justin Maxwell gets the ball in quickly. So back-to-back -back singles against Pineda to get things started for the Phillies here in the first inning. This is what the Phillies are going to need all year long with that pitching staff. As you see, Victorino knows the holes on the right side. Pierre can run. It's a fast, it's a fastball out over the plate and just hooks it in the hole. Former MVP Jimmy Rollins is in the third spot tonight. Now, one thing the Phillies are missing is they get ready to start the regular season. Chase Utley, their all-star second baseman, will begin the year on the disabled list with uh, bad knees. Both his knees are bothering it. And the cleanup hitter, Ryan Howard, of course, had uh, Achilles tendon surgery following an injury last year on the last play of the season. And he's out until maybe June. That first pitch is inside for ball one. So the number three and four hitters for the Phillies will not be around for a while. And 
Philadelphia's going to rely even more on their starting pitching, which is very, very good. Maybe the best of the big leagues. Two on, nobody out, and a 1 0 count on Jimmy Rollins. And that is high ball, two, two balls and no strikes. Like Rollins and Utley have been together for the last nine seasons in Philadelphia. Half that act will be missing come opening day. Rollins hits one hard on the backhand. Chavez, he goes to Jeter. Nice scoop at second for one. The throw to first is not in time. Rollins beats the relay. So they get the middle runner. And now there's runners on the corners with one out. Well, Chavez with a, with a nice stab on the backhand, and Jeter with a nice pick, and Pineda's got to be there. He's not. Chavez tries to save him. But you see right here, Pineda right there, he just, just hesitates. He doesn't break right away, and that's going to cost him. He had a chance to get a double play. So now the Phillies still have a threat. A nice play by Jeter in the middle here to scoop that throw from Chavez out of the dirt and try to complete the double play. So now Pineda first and third. One out and bring up the cleanup hitter, Jim Tomey, the designated hitter tonight. Tomey, the future Hall of Famer with 604 career home runs. Runner goes from first to look towards third to throw to second. It's in time. They got it. Russell Martin cuts down Jimmy Rollins. Pierre holds it third. Now there are two outs. Jimmy Rollins gets a good jump, but Martin just a peek at third to hold the runner. Jeter with another good pick out of the dirt. Jimmy Rollins, you know, you get not the best time to run if you're thinking the tag up high. I don't think so. With Jim Tomey at the plate, the fly ball would score a run. Now there's two outs. A fly ball would be the third out of the inning. First pitch to Tomei was a ball. Next one's a little upstairs. Ball two. Two balls and no strikes. You notice as uh, David called it, just a look at third base by Russell Mark before delivering the second. Just that look that frees the runner so Pierre wouldn't start from third. That's a key play in that situation. Tomei takes a pitch for a call strike and it's two and one. I was talking to Jim Tomey before the game, one of the nicest guys in baseball that you ever want to meet. And he was telling me, you know, he's getting towards the end of his career, but his career actually started in the Cleveland Indians organization in the Gulf Coast League. Who was his hitting coach? Charlie Manuel, way back when. Back in 1989. Little did they know that uh, Jim Tomey was on his way to hitting over 600 home runs. So Charlie schooled him right, right from the beginning. Nice to see somebody still playing that I pitched against. <laughs> I'm definitely in Jim Tomey's book. Hit a monster grand slam off of me when he's with Cleveland in the playoffs. It still wakes me up at night. Has it landed yet? 3 1 pitch, and it's ball four. Tomey draws a walk. And that's nothing new. He's got a career on base percentage over 40%. So and once again, it's first and third, this time with two outs. Nate is struggling here in the early going. He's had that happen to him in some other starts this spring. He struggled to get into his start and then settle down. It was sort of his trend in Seattle last year as well. Pineda would start out the game with a little lower velocity, and as the innings worn on, wore on, his velocity seemed to pick up. All-star Hunter Pence came over to the Phillies in a deal with the Houston Astros last year, and he takes a curveball inside ball one. Pence became a fan favorite. With his all around hustle, kind of an unorthodox player, he, power hitter who chokes up on the bat. He says, well, Barry Bonds used to choke up on the bat. He's got some speed, both sides of the ball, too. He plays defense well. Sweet and a miss. Didn't get cheated on that, but it's a ball and a strike. Pence has a couple of home runs this spring. Pence with the open stance. Pineda with the kind of, you know, his fastball's cutting a little bit off. Early in the going here. Foul back. I was saying Pence has a couple of home runs this spring, both against the Yankees in the first two games of spring training. He hasn't hit one since. That's what he did with Houston and then with the Phillies. 
Drove in 97 runs a year ago in the National League. Pineda tried to get out unscathed here at the top of the first, although he struggled somewhat. One two pitch, good swing, and it's fouled back. He hadn't been fooling too many hitters this inning. Yeah, his fastball's been up. It looks like he's getting around this fastball a little bit to me, Kenny. You know, he's got kind of an old school big delivery, but it, it, his fastball's kind of cutting on him. When you say bit. around, you mean it's a delivery needs a little tweaking there. Yeah, it seems like, you know, maybe he, his, his hand's just on the side of the ball a little bit, which is causing his fastball to cut, which may explain some of the velocity dips. Pitches loop towards right field, and this is going to drop in for a base hit. Pierre is going to score. Tommy's on his way to third, and the Phillies take a one nothing lead. So Hunter Pants with a two strike, excuse me, type swing, picks up a run batted in. Third so Hunter Pence can do this, you know. I mean, even though you feel like he's out in front of it, he, his, his rear end's going towards the dugout, but he reaches right off the end of the bat, just gets enough of it to get it to the outfield grass. I'll tell you something, David. When you get a hit like this to drive it or run in your first at bat, you feel you're going to have a good night. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's the old pitcher's adage. Oh, I made a good pitch and he got a lucky hit, but you know what? That's good hitting, too. He stayed on that pitch even though he was fooled and got enough of it to get an RBI. Here's Placido Polanco, the third baseman. Solid player. Hits one in the air to right field for Justin Maxwell, who's there, makes the catch. And that is going to do it for the Phillies here in the first inning. They pick up a run on three heads at the end of the half an inning. Man, the Phillies have a one nothing lead on the Yankees. Open. Derek Jeter will be at bat when we come back. Yankees getting their first at bats of the night against a left hander on the mound for the Philadelphia Phillies. Here's Steinbrenner Field. And here's the Yankee lineup presented by Lexus. At the top, the captain, Derek Jeter, he'll lead it off. Curtis Grandison will bat second. Robinson Cano back in the lineup tonight. He'll be playing second base. Cleaning up is Alex Rodriguez, followed by Eric Chavez. Russell Martin does the catching. Andrew Jones will be the designated hitter tonight. Justin Maxwell's in right. And Brett Gardner in left field and bat ninth. Girardi and that uh, appears to be Mike Harkin, the bullpen coach, is yet to go down to the bullpen. And here's the starting pitcher for the Phillies tonight. It's going to be Antonio Bastardo. He is a, a reliever by trade, but he gets the start here tonight. And you can see his seasonal numbers: 64 games last year, 70 strikeouts and 58 innings. Those are pretty good numbers. We'll take a look at the Volkswagen scout report. He had some health concerns early in the spring. He had some cramping in his pitching arm, and they thought it was due to dehydration. So they tried to hydrate him, get him to drink some more water, and he's bouncing back. That's probably why he's starting tonight uh, to get him some work, and he is tough to hit. Opponents hit 144 off of him, which is the lowest for a Philly reliever since 1920. Cool. Strikeout stuff, too. He averaged over 10 strikeouts per nine innings as well. 1920. Derek Jeter hits the first pitch on the ground to Jimmy Rollins. And Rollins delivers the first base for the out. You saw Rollins at short. Let's check out the rest of the Phillies defense brought to you by the Home Depot in the outfield from left to right. They've got some speed out there with Pierre and left, Victorino at center, and Pence and right. Polanco, Rollins, Galvis, Wigginton in the infield, and Carlos Ruiz is doing the catching for Antonio Bastardo. See Galvis jumps out at you at second base for Chase Utley. Curtis Granderson takes a pitch for a call strike. 
The Phillies really like this young second baseman, even though they'd love to have Chase Utley, obviously, out there playing. But uh, Galvis has been exciting to watch. Granderson fouls the pitch down the left field side. It's going to be a long run, and it's going to be Jimmy Rollins who makes the catch in fair territory. Just inside the line, he reaches out and makes the grab. Looks like he's not going to get there. A, a quick turn of the glove. Off the bat, I'm thinking, no way, he's not going to get there. And that ball's in fair territory. And a nice play by Jimmy Rollins. <laughs> Take a seat, Jimmy. Very popular in Philadelphia. Just signed a three year extension. Here's Robinson Cano. Cano swings at the free. Yankees are up there swinging tonight. Swings at the first pitch and fouls it off. Let's check out the game time weather conditions brought to you by Toyota. Here in Tampa, another lovely night. Oh, we dipped under 80 though. 78 degrees. Get your coat, Tony. Partly cloudy in the Bronx, 52, mostly sunny. Here's a pitch low and away for a ball. Cano hitting just over 200 this spring, but he's starting to come on with the bat. Those are his numbers from last year. Second in the American League and runs batted in. He does lead the Yankees and runs batted in this spring with 10. 1 1 pitch breaks down and away, and it's two balls and a strike. Both these teams are among the favorites in their divisions. Take the whole thing in the East in the National League and in the East in the American League. Grab all the second for Galvis. The style is going to have a one, two, three inning as he retires Cano. The Yankees go in order. We're going to move on to the second inning. At the end of one, the Phillies have a one nothing lead on the Yankees. We believe in the potential, but you know, I can't tell you I'm certain about anything other than I'm glad that we have uh, a player of his capabilities in the fold, and we certainly hope it translates. Yankee GM Brian Cashman on the acquisition of the big right hander Michael Pineda, who gave up a run on three hits, including a walk in the first inning. And the Yankees are expecting big things from this large young man. Six foot eight, about 270 plus pounds. He's going to face Ty Wigginton here in the top of the second inning. And David, you think he's, he's got to get on top of his fastball. And uh, you were watching him warm up in between innings here, and he's still slinging it. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's trying to manufacture movement or not, but he's getting a, around his fastball a little bit, and his ball's cutting quite a bit. Wigginton takes one down and away for ball one. No, when, when, you, when you get around your fastball and you manufacture a cut type movement, then your velocity is going to go down because you're going for movement over velocity. So. You know, I could see right now probably why his velocity is down a little bit this spring. Pitch is fouled back and it's one and one on Wigginton. It's nice to have a cut fastball in your delivery. You know if he's trying to do that but. Uh, 
Seems like every ball, he's just getting around it just a little bit. And if you watch his fastballs, you'll see right to left movement a la Mariano Rivera. Pitches popped up and out of play. Wigginton's going to, I'm sorry, David, go ahead. Well, we, you and I did the game out in Seattle last year and watched him pitch. And that certainly wasn't what he was featuring last year. But you see he's got the old school delivery over the head. You see his, fat, his, his wrist is just getting around that fastball as he falls off the mound a little bit. Here's a good slider and it's swung on it. Missed for strike three. First strike out of the night for Pineda. Here's Pineda's slider. He's got a good one. Right on top of it. Wigington swings at it like it's a fastball. But there's that old, old school flowing over the head delivery. Here's Carlos Ruiz, the catcher, and he takes a pitch for a call strike. You can see the movement on the fastball as it gets towards that last uh, six inches or so to the plate. It's a little right to left. There it is again, this time just off the corner. And it's a ball and a strike. Now it could be that's something that maybe he's working on privately. You know, that that's the type of movement he's trying to generate on his forcing fastball, but. There's a curveball and that drops in and it's one and two. But that would explain, you know, last year everybody was talking about Pineda throwing the ball 97, 98 miles an hour. As you see Russell Martin setting up away right here. This ball is hit well on the left center field. It's going to have Gardner on the run. He's still moving. And this ball is going to hop over the fence for a ground rule double. That pitch was right down the middle and Ruiz hit it like he called for it. A lot of fastballs have been up in the count. Actually, Martin's setting up inside. And you see the ball cutting back over the middle of the plate. And when you're throwing a four seam fastball that's cutting, that tends to stay flat sometimes. And when it goes towards the middle of the plate, it gets hit hard. So with one out, a runner at second. Yeah, it was right down the middle. Time to back up a base. That'll bring up Freddie Galvis. The second baseman and batting ninth, and he takes a pitch for his strike. Gallus last year was the Phillies minor league player of the year. He played at double A and triple A. He's a shortstop by trade. But it looks like he's going to get a lot of time at second base with the absence of Chase Utley. There's a pitch that misses a ball and a strike. Charlie Mandel was going to have to do some uh, major maneuvering in the early going. Unless Halliday, Cliff Lee, Cole Hamels. Vance Worley and Joe Blanton can really pitch their tails off. See, that's probably why they like Juan Pierre in left field right now. Uh, and, uh, they get, go for the manufactured speed at the top of the lineup with you know, Pierre and Victorino and then Jimmy Rollins in the three hole. You can see Shane Victorino there patting his manager on the back. They play hard for Charlie. They really like him. Pitches fouled at the plate. Phillies have won the division five years in a row. And here are the major injuries for the Phillies. Michael Martinez expected to return in May. Foot injury expected to return in mid-April is Chase Utley. Both knees are bothering him and expected to return in June is the big man, Ryan Howard. Phillies tendon surgery. Swing and a foul hit for did he miss it? It is a foul ball off the bat of Galvis. Good looking slider and gets a tip of it. Dallas has had a pretty good spring. He actually leads the Phillies and runs back in with 12, but he's the number nine hitter. He's gotten a lot of playing time this spring. Ball on the ground to second for Cano. He gloves it, throws on the first for out number two. On the play, Carlos Ruiz moves over to third base. So Pineda being challenged for the second consecutive inning. He's got a runner at third, two outs, and the lineup turns over for Juan Pierre. Pierre had a single that scored the run in the ball game last inning. He's had himself a good spring. Tries to slap a butt over the head of Alex Rodriguez. 
one of the best butters in the game because he works at it. Yeah, Alex well in on the grass. He tried to slash one over his head. This is his game, speed. He's been that way for quite a while. Yankees and Gardner and Granderson and left and center, maybe the shallowest outfield positions I've seen in a long time. Wow. Ball is fouled off to the left. In fact, Gardner's playing a deep third base. Pierre down in the count. No balls and two strikes. See Brett Gardner right there. That is as shallow as you will see any big league left fielder play right there. That's like little league distance. Granderson in center as well. A Rod drops back to about even with the bag at third. Now with two strikes on. Juan Pierre. Ball is lined in the center field. Coming on is Granderson. He can't get it. It drops in. Pierre has his second hit. The Phillies have their second run as Carlos Ruiz scores. Couldn't play close enough as Pierre drops him on in front of the Yankee center fielder. It's now two nothing Phillies. Well, you see once again Russell Martin set up away and the fastball cuts over the middle and the cutters flat and up and a shake of the head and another hit. And now a stolen base threat at first with two down and Victorino at the plate. Victorino had a base hit his first time. There's another throw over the first to check on Juan Pierre. This would be a good time for him to go with two outs. Even though he's thrown out, you got Victorino leading off next inning. He's not going, and the pitch is just outside for a ball. I mentioned earlier, speed at the top with Pierre at first and Victorino at the plate. Pierre with 554 career steals. Paul Crawford second, Ichiro third, Johnny David. Not signed as of yet. Omar Vizquel. Who's in Blue Jays camp. Those are the uh, top five. Well, that's a shame. Johnny Damon yeah. can't find a place to play. No, no, on a march towards 3,000 hits, too. He's, yeah. He has a chance to get there if he could get the at bats. I have a feeling that Johnny's not going to be out of work too long. Somebody's going to come and knock him. Pierre has to scramble back. Sometimes when a pitcher throws over and the runner has to scramble back, that tells you his intentions. We're thinking about the next base. If they get back easily, they, they weren't going on that particular pitch. Pierre with a good lead. Not going. Pitches swung on and missed on a changeup. That's the pitch that uh, Pineda's been working on most of the spring. Can working on a changeup so much affect your ability to throw your fastball? Sometimes it can, especially if you're trying to turn that changeup over and get a screwball type spin on it. It can take a little bit away from your other pitches. Pierre's going. The pitch is low for a ball. The throw to second is in time. They got it. Russell Martin throws out his second runner of the night. Derek Jeter flies the tag. But the Phillies pick up another run at the end of inning and a half. Pierre is gone, but the Phillies lead 2 nothing.
Sunday afternoon, the Yankees get their first look at the new Marlins Park where they face off with Jose Reyes in the revamped Miami Ball Club. Coverage starts at 1 o'clock. Michael Kane and Al Leiter have all the action from South Florida. Only on the end. I want to get a peek at that ballpark myself. It, that flag there, if the wind comes up a little bit, it was a stretch out to show you 2009. Of course, the Yankee fans remember that as a World Series championship year. They beat the Philadelphia Phillies that year. I'll tell you, Philly fans travel well. We've got a lot of Philly fans here tonight. They train just across the, uh, across the causeway in Clearwater. Alex Rodriguez leading off, and he swings at the first pitch. It's a high fly ball to left field. Pierre going back. I don't think A-Rod got that one. It was in on the hands a bit. There's one out. Just a hair late. Out of the Yankees, hitting him in the order. And it appears that pitching coach Rich Doobie is going out to the mound. Does he want to do pitching? Rich, yep. Rich Doobie, the pitching coach, mm -hmm. uh, Kenny, was, was my minor league pitching coach with the Royals. That's going to be it for Best Arnold, the reliever. They just wanted to get him some pitches. Get some pitches, then we'll have a new pitcher when we come back right here on Yes. One out here in the bottom of the second inning. Yankees down 2 0 to the Philadelphia Phillies. New pitcher is uh, another reliever for the Phillies. It's going to be Chad Balls, and he'll face Eric Chavez here, getting his first hit back. And first pitch is a call strike. So Chad Balls, the veteran reliever, last year with the Padres, 77 games. He's been a workhorse several years with Houston, starting in 04. And He's had a quality career up to this point. Ball in a strike on the Yankee first baseman. So the star that goes an inning in the third. Faces four batters and retires the ball. And if he can get it right back to the Clearwater, he'll be back there in about a half hour. Now, David, you mentioned Rich Doobie had been your uh, pitching coach in the minor leagues? Yes, Rich Doobie back with the Royals back in the early 80s was a uh, Royals pitching coach and uh, never really made it to the big leagues. He kind of topped out at double A, but really worked hard and stayed in the game. And finally, over the last 12 years, has really established himself as one of the best big league pitching coaches around. And these, this Phillies pitching staff really loves working with him. Well, he's got a good staff to work with. This pitch is lined over second and in the right field for a base hit. First hit of the game for the Yankees, Eric Chavez is on with one out. I mean, when you have the likes of Halliday, Lee, Hamels, 
Vance Worley, the youngster, and Joe Bland. They got a good starting staff. And now they've got Jonathan Papelbon to close games for them. Phillies uh, led all the baseball in ERA last year. Yeah, that'll make a pitching coach look good right there. Those numbers. Wow. Cole Hamels. Free agent after the year. Yes, that's going to be an interesting deal. What happens with him? Russell Martin takes a pitch downstairs for ball one. Martin's had a good night already. He's thrown out two runners attempting to steal. Very quick. It's all set up by the footwork. And the strong arm, of course. The 1 0 -on -on pitch is swung on and missed, and it's a ball and a strike. I mentioned the Phillies just across the causeway in the Clearwater. Maybe about a half hour from Tampa. Their fans travel well. A lot of red in the seats tonight. Here's Time Brenner Field. That pitch is low, and that's what you see in Philadelphia as well. Citizens Bank Ballpark. 204 consecutive sellouts. And the youngster on the left with the Yankee out, he was happy three years ago in 2009. These two, I don't know. Philly fans got that smug smile on their face in the early going here. Pitch is fouled off by Mark. Two balls and two strikes. It's not exactly like the Red Sox and the Yankees. You know, there's not a lot of hatred there. You know, the Phillies more for the Mets. I'll tell you what, the Phillies uh, must have gotten a short straw in interleague play this year. They play every team in the American League East. With the exception of the Yankees in interleague play. Inside the count is full three and two. Martin jumps back out of the way. Hard sinker from Qualls. Qualls has been a workhorse for years. Had some great years in Houston. 70 to 80 appearances per year. Very reliable. Strong right hander. Three two pitches on the way and it's outside for ball four. So with one out the Yankees have the time runs on base. Balls comes in gives up a base hit and now a walk. Pitching coach goes for a little walk himself. And here's Andrew Jones who's tonight serving as the designated hitter. On the phone, somebody's going to be heating up in the Philly bullpen beyond the uh, stands in the left field. It's going to be going to be that kind of game when you start off your, your you know your game with two relievers. You know, uh, Astardo got his work in. Now Qualls is obviously a, a longtime reliever on a pitch count. And what is Bonilla warming up? Two on one out. The first pitch to Jones misses. Ball one. It's Lisa Berto Bonilla. Outside ball two, two balls and no strikes. So Paul's having a little problem with the strike zone here. Eventually, you got to lay one in there. And I tell you, if it's towards the middle of the plate, Andrew Jones is going to put a good swing on it. You can bet on that. And he takes one. A little movement on the fastball for a call strike. Qualls has always had that heavy sinker. He could pound that sinker down in the low 90s. Gets a lot of ground balls. And a bit of a jam here in the second. High ball three. Three balls and a strike to Andrew Jones. Two on, one out for the Yankees here in a second. Ball four, and the bases are loaded with one out. So Balls with his second walk and his many batters. 
moves Chavez to third. Martin goes down to second. And Jones is now in first. He hasn't retired to batter. It'll bring up Justin Maxwell, who's getting a lot of playing time of late. And he's having a pretty good spring. He's driven in eight runs. He's got Chavez at third, looking for some more RBIs. Martin at second. Jones at first. Maxwell hitting at 333 this spring. Pitch is grounded towards the middle, and Jared, Jimmy Rollins has it, throws the second, but one not in time, the first. It looked like that ball was going to scoot through and get into the outfield. The Yankees do pick up a run, and it's now a two to one game as Maxwell gets the RBI. Well, you're exactly right, Kenny. It looked like it was based in on the way up the middle. Jimmy Rollins has great range, gets there. And the young kid, Dallas, I didn't think he'd have a chance to turn this. He really hangs in there. Rollins with a nice flip. And all over him is Andrew Jones. Still gets off the throw, does Galvis. And even though there's probably no chance, but showed some guts hanging in there at second. Well, Galvis's primary position is shortstop. And there was some feeling that the Phillies did not sign Jimmy Rollins to an extension. Galvis is going to be their shortstop. Here's Brett Gardner batting in the ninth spot. Yankees have cut the Phillies lead in half. It's now a two to one game. And Gardner takes a pitch for a call strike. Gardner numbers from last year. Last night's ball game he went one for three against Baltimore. There's that sinker you're talking about, David. This is outside. 93 with some movement. Ball in the strike. Runners on the corners for the Yankees. Gardner with a chance to tie up the ball game with two down. Check on Maxwell at first. He's stolen four bases this spring without being caught. Remember, he's about six foot six. He's got good speed. Got a lot of scouts watching him too. There's a lot of interest in Maxwell. He's out of options, including these Phillies who have, who have looked at him too. There he goes. Pitches outside for a ball. The throw to second is high, and Maxwell steals his fifth base of the spring. So now the Yankees have the go ahead run in scoring position. Good jump. You can see he's really relaxed, but gets a running lead. Easily under the tag. So second and third now with two outs. There's that sinker outside once again, and the count is three and one. Balls is one pitch away from reloading the bases. This is not the way that the Phillies envisioned him getting his work in today. Been big movement with that two seamer, but he's having a hard time finding where to start it to get it in the strike zone. Ball is hit on the ground to short for Rollins. Quickly across the diamond to retire Gardner. But the Yankees pick up a run here in the fifth inning. I should say in the second inning at the end of two it's two to one Phillies.
I like the way I threw the ball yesterday, and I was, you know, I went far in the game, and you know that's very important for me. You said you've been using all your pitches. You got up to about 95 pitches yesterday. How do you feel? Are you ready for the season to start? Yeah, yeah, I think I'm ready. Um, I threw, like you say, 95 pitches yesterday, and you know I threw a lot. That I threw like 90 the other day too. So I'm thinking I'm stretching. I think I'm ready to go. A lot of questions about who's going to be in the rotation. Six guys for five spots. How do you feel about what you've done down here and whether you deserve to be in the rotation? I mean, I know I give a lot of runs, this, uh, a lot of home run to this spring training, but, you know, I take this spring training to work on my pitching and what I have to work, and I think uh, I'm going to be in the rotation. So you would be surprised if you weren't in the rotation? No, I'm not. I mean, I want to be there, so if I'm not, of course, you got to be surprised, but I think I'm, I'm in the rotation. Well, that was our Jack Curry talking to Ivan Nova about his Pitching yesterday in a minor league game is Joe Girardi, the Yankee manager, who's got the tough decision about the uh, rotation. Who stays, who goes. Jack is uh, joining us here in the top of the third inning, and let's talk about Ivan Nova and I the think, way he's pitched. I think you're right, Kenny, that it's a tough decision for Girardi, but you hear Nova right there, a lot of confidence, and sure, he has an ERA of about seven this spring. They don't count the minor league game that he pitched in yesterday. Those don't count toward the stats, but when Joe Girardi has talked about assessing these pitchers, he continually says that you can't forget about what Nova did last season. So based on that, and every time he mentions that, I, I do believe Nova, there won't be a surprise. I do believe he will be in that rotation. I, I think he has sewn a spot up, but Girardi hasn't given up anything yet. And in talking to Nova off camera, he admitted he's a little antsy. He'd like to know. He'd like to know the answer. He'd like to know what his season is going to look like. Well, we got one week to go here in spring training. We're going to find out soon. Nova, of course, last year went 16 and 4 in the rookie season. Didn't lose a game all summer long. As Pineda walks Jimmy Rollins here with one out here at the top of the third. Now, how about the rest of the rotation? How do things shape up there? I think Kenny, that Joe Girardi in his session with the media today, I think he gave some clues. He, he gave the rotation what the Yankees are using for the rest of spring training. Now, Adam Warren will pitch tomorrow. He, he's going to end up going back to Scranton. But then it's CC Sabathia on Sunday. Hughes and Kuroda are going to split Monday's game. Nova is going to pitch on Tuesday. And then Garcia and Pineda will split Wednesday's game. So you could look at that schedule and say, CeCe's going to be your opening day starter. Kuroda uh -huh. will pitch game two. Hughes will pitch game three with an extra day of rest. Nova will pitch game four with an extra day of rest. And then you're up to game five, and it's Pineda and Garcia. And I think that's the decision that they're trying to mull over right now. And do you think this is boiling down to that last start between those two, Pineda and Garcia, splitting a game? Is the who's going to be the fifth man in the rotation? I think that as Joe Girardi has said, it's all about the information that comes his way. I think tonight is very important uh -huh. for Pineda. I think they're watching what he's doing out there. I, I think some of his secondary pitches you have to be really happy with. I think they're probably still looking for more velocity on that fastball. We saw a 94 in the second inning. I don't know if it comes down to what happens on Wednesday, Kenny, but it certainly is a situation where they're not ready to say just yet who has those last few spots. Not a particularly good ball strike ratio tonight for Pineda. He's walked a couple, has one strikeout, checks on Jimmy Rollins at first. Let's move on to the injury situation. You, you got David Robertson. Who uh, were all awaiting to come back healthy and really help out the, the Yankee bullpen. He seems to be uh, moving along just fine. He is. He pitched in a double A game today, though, Kenny. And I, I wonder, David, what you would think about this. I always hear pitchers saying, you go down there in the minor leagues and those kids are going to take their axe against you. And Robertson actually had to build up some arm strength and threw two innings today, but he gave up some hits five hits, two runs. And I think it was a matter of those those kids were going to try and take some hacks at him. They know who David Robertson is. Yeah, they you know the, the minor league guys they just they're hard to walk. You know <laughs> they're, yeah. they're, they're swinging the bat, so you can't really set them up. Rollins is on the move. The ball is lying down the right field line and headed for the corner. Rollins is headed to third. Wants out well is waving him home. Jim Tomey is going to be in the second with a run scoring double, and the Phillies now lead it three to one. They're building a fence post up on the scoreboard there. One run in the first, one in the second, and now one here in the third against Pineda. Well, you see Russell Martin setting up away, and you see the fastball once again. He's around it, and it cuts back towards the middle of the plate. Jim Tomey's all over it. That's the way he used to swing the bat when I threw that pitch in there. So Jimmy Rollins picks it up quickly, and now at this point, he's running well. He's going to easily score. 
So Pineda's struggles continue here in the third inning. With Philadelphia now leading three to one. Jimmy Rollins scoring all the way from first. So David, getting back to David Robertson, he got roughed up by the minor leaguers. That, that, it's probably happened in the past. So you, you go down and maybe you, I don't, I'm not saying his heart was completely in it because he's not facing big league hitters. I think what Joe Girardi wants though now is arm strength yeah, because no. he missed that amount of time with the bone bruise on his foot. That's why he threw two innings today. He's, he's not really a two inning guy. They won't use him really for two innings during the season, but they want him to build that arm strength back up. But we showed that ball strike count with Pineda a little while ago, and that was the same thing with Robertson. Still trying to perfect some of his pitches. His uh, breaking pitches really weren't where he wanted them to be today. The curveball wasn't as sharp as it normally is during the season. So for him, I think it's a matter of getting the work in right now, and he's got a week left to try and get himself ready so that he's ready for the old opener. Another Yankee dealing with some injury issues is Nick Swisher. How close is Nick to getting back into the lineup? Very close, Kenny. In fact, when someone asked him, what's the last hurdle that you need to overcome to get back in the lineup? He said the manager. So Joe Girardi <laughs> wanted him to. He played in a minor league game today and got a bunch of at-bats, played five innings in the outfield. He's almost ready to let it go. He said he's ready to be out there. Girardi said, let's give him Saturday off. And he's looking to possibly play him on Sunday, and that would include playing in the outfield. That sounds like an answer you would get from Nick Swisher. Absolutely. And that sounds like what the Yankees should do. You, you don't want to rush a guy back. You have a little bit of time to work with here, and you would leave Swisher with what? Those five or six days to get himself ready and get himself ready to face the Rays and James Shields. Yeah, Nick has been dealing with some groin issues this spring and uh, came into spring training in tremendous condition. Uh, he and Russell Martin in particular looked like they were ready to run a triathlon. Hunter Pence is at the plate and he swings and misses and has struck out. So Pineda gets him to chase a high fastball, picks up his second strikeout of the game, but the Phillies have scored again here in the third inning. You see Russell Martin setting up away and Pineda goes up, up on top of the strike zone, up and in. But you can see Pineda's location hasn't been there, although above the ladders is always good. Jack, we're watching the Phillies here tonight. What do you think about the Phillies' chances with the absence of uh, Howard and Utley? We've been talking about it uh, a little earlier. I, I think this team, when I, the first thing I think about this team, though, is always pitching. Yeah. And, and I know with those two players, that side of your infield, it's a loss when you don't have those guys. But I still look at the pitchers that they are going to put out there every five days, and that's what I like so much about this team. They need they need Utley. I mean, they need to. Sh Utley's got to come back and prove that he can be the player that he was. I think with Howard. That was an injury where as long as he heals, I believe they think he'll be who he was when he comes back. Utley's a guy who's beaten himself up over the years, plays that very rough, very aggressive style. And I think they want to just see him get back to that player, even if it's a case where you're not playing 155 games anymore, Chase. You're going to play 135, but they just want to get him to be that guy again. Yeah, both these are now bothering the all-star second base. Flacco's at the plate with a count of one and one. That pitch misses inside for a ball. It's almost been top secret over there, right? Utley doesn't really talk to the media that much, although he had a press conference the other day for the first time in a month. And then Ruben Amaro had to come and sort of counteract that press conference and a little miscommunication between the organization and the player. And a little bit of a mystery there and not a lot of communicating with the media. David, a couple years ago when I was still a sports writer, um, well, I still write for YesNetwork.com, but when I was writing for the New York Times, I did a feature on Chase Utley and trying to get him to just agree to do the interview and then the amount of time that he would give. He wasn't being impolite. He just didn't want to do it. He, he avoids the media. He doesn't like talking about himself. And this is when he was pushing to be an MVP candidate. This was going to be a very positive article. Didn't want to talk about anything. A reluctant superstar. The count is now full on Polanco. In fact, quick funny line. I needed some help with the story because he wasn't giving me much. I dug up a phone number for his dad, and when I called the father, I said, I had the opportunity to interview your uh, son today. And he said, but poor you. <laughs> Jack, always digging, though. But the, the father was great. The yeah. father was a comedian. Yeah. He, he had one liner after the other, but, but Chase did not really want to talk about himself. And I imagine when the stuff is very serious now and it, it's about your career, you, you might be even more hesitant to talk. Ball four as Polanco draws a walk and uh, it continues. Third walk of the game handed out by Pineda. His pitch count is getting up there. 59 pitches. And we've got two outs at the top of the third inning. Now how about Pineda tonight, Jack? A little concern here, I'm sure, for Joe Girardi and Larry Rothschild, how things are shaping up. 
against the Phillies today. Right. Joe Girardi has said that the last starter two that each starter has those are going to weigh more for him and his decisions than anything that happened earlier in the spring. And I think there's no secret they were hoping Pineda would come out here and be a lot sharper. He hasn't looked smooth. I mentioned some of the secondary stuff. I thought he threw a couple of good sliders earlier in the game. But David just mentioned it earlier a couple of those times where Martin is setting up at different positions and it just doesn't seem as if Pineda is being able to locate where they want him to go. Good curveball and a swing and a miss by Wigginton who struck out his first time. So Pineda been working out of jams all night long. Yeah, he took a little bit off of this curve. This is more of a curveball as you see at 79 miles an hour. Good spin, good road, good location on that pitch. This pitch is pop foul and out of play and quickly. Wigginton is down 0 2. If you think Jack Curry is leaving after just a half an inning, no, he's coming back for the bottom half of the inning, folks. It's you want to stay too. I just see every four seam fastball that Pineda throws he's getting around and he's getting cuts sort of a right to left cutting action on his fastball which to me explains the velocity drop. You can't throw the ball 97 miles an hour when you're cutting it and you're around it. How can you uh, you know control that get it under control outside for a ball. It could be a grip issue it could be an arm angle issue maybe he doesn't have the arm strength built up uh, as of yet maybe he's just dropping his arm and getting around that four seam fastball a little bit. You know, it's, it's every pitch is cutting on him though when he's throwing his four-seam fastball. Yeah, I've heard the term you have to throw more downhill. What does that mean? More downhill, and, and you've got to reach out there and get more extension. You've got to have the arm strength to be able to do that. Ground ball in the third. A-Rod has it. Throws the second, and it's a wide throw. All hands are safe. And it appeared that uh, Polanco was going to be safe anyway. So the bases are loaded, and here comes Larry Rothschild, the Yankee pitching coach to the mound. Cano took everything he had just to come up with a throw and keep it from going in the right field. Yeah, an outstanding play by Cano just to, to save this pit, this, this wide throw from getting by. You can see Rothschild trying to settle down Pineda. You know, hey, got a long inning going here. Let's give you a little break. Get back on top. You know, those are the type of plays you get. When you're struggling on the mound, but you're controlling, throwing pitch after pitch, the hitters kind of get back on their heels. They don't expect the ball to be hit, and all of a sudden it's coming in their direction. So now the Phillies have the bases loaded with two outs. And it'll bring up Carlos Ruiz, who doubled to the gap in left center field. So Joe Girardi's really interested in what was said on the mound with his pitching coach there. And you can see Pineda's got a little bad body language tonight going. He's not, not happy with his location, not happy with the way this game's going a little bit. You kind of want to see a guy that's more aggressive with better presence on the mound. Deals a strike over the outside corner. Now we went, had one subject. It's going to take a little longer to talk about. So we want to save this one for the bottom half of the third inning. David, Jack, and I are going to talk about uh, just the divisions in general and some of the teams throughout Major League Baseball who we think might be some surprises. So you want to stay tuned for that. Bottom half of the inning. There's a breaking ball, curveball that misses, and it's a ball and a strike. But they have thought he had a strike. Yeah, somewhat of a rough outing for Michael Pineda. Phillies have three runs on six hits. And we're just in the third inning. He's also walked three. Ball two, two and one. Kenny, as we've talked about the rotation, and we will continue to talk about it, and it will be a story for the next several days. Joe Girardi said something today that I hadn't heard him say previously. See, Logan is up in the bullpen right now. You would think that if the Yankees make a decision and start the season with it, they would stick with that for a while. But Girardi said, listen, if we do something, it's not necessarily permanent. So that got me wondering, yeah. does a guy like Pineda need a little more seasoning down in Florida? Do they, do they work with him a little? Does he miss one start? Does Garcia get the nod out? So there's just a lot going on, and it's, it's, it's dramatic. It's suspenseful because in a team where the roster is virtually set, this is what everybody is focusing on. This is what everyone is wondering about. Who is going to be those last couple of starters in the rotation? Behind on the count, three balls and a strike. And Ruiz might have helped him out there and fouled it off, and the count is now full. And also, guys, you have to remember that Andy Pettit's out there on the horizon somewhere. He'll be showing up, you know, maybe in May. 
And that's going to make another decision for Joe Girardi and the Yankees. And that one probably gets tougher. A month yeah. from now, it's even a tougher decision because you're going to have guys who have already pitched and have already accomplished things in 2012. Runners go to 3 2 pitches found that the plate will do it all over again. Well, you know, it's very difficult on the Yankees to, to say if they were going to say to Pineda, we need we need to give you more time in the minor leagues and you have options left. And we, and even though we gave up our best prospect, Jesus Montero, the right thing for the organization might be for him to go to AAA. That's very difficult uh -huh. on the Yankees to make that decision. But if that's the right thing to do, then that's the decision that needs to be made. You, well, have, you have to protect this young man. He's still only 23 years old. He's got a bright future. You want him to hit the man during the regular season with a positive frame of mind. Here's the 3 2 pitch, and it's fouled off again by Ruiz. You can't put this kid in a position to get buried in the Bronx his first few starts. You just can't do it, you know. And I'm not saying that's the decision, or, uh -huh. or maybe that's what the way they're leaning. But if you have any doubts about whether his arm strength is ready or not, then you can't take the chance to have him get buried. In New York in his first few starts. Just 23 years old, just turned 23. I like his delivery, I like his stuff, but it just looks to me like maybe his arm strength isn't quite there. He's around his fastball quite a bit. Certainly tonight, his location has been off. Pitch is hit well in left field and deep. This is going to chase guard to bat. Running hard, he can't get it. The ball is up against the wall. All three runners are going to score. It's a base clearing double for Carlos Ruiz, and the Phillies now lead it six to one. Ruiz's second double of the ball game, and that's going to bring Joe Girardi out of the dugout, and that's going to be it for Pineda. Roughed up for four runs here in the third inning, and six overall on seven hits. And he's gone. There's going to be a pitching change. Appears that Boone Logan will be in the ball game with two outs in the third. Not a good night for Michael Pineda. He leaves out allowing six runs on seven hits, a couple of strikeouts and three walks. And has just given up a bases clearing double to Carlos Ruiz. Now gives way to Boone Logan. Logan trying to pick up the third out here in the top of the third inning. He'll face the number nine hitter, Freddie Galvis, the second baseman. And Logan feels outside for ball one. Those are the numbers on Logan. From last year. Interesting debate about uh, Michael Pineda and what are his chances uh, of making the club and how much have they been hurt by tonight's performance? Ball's hit the air for Curtis Granderson in center field who drifts back. 
makes the catch and finally the Phillies are retired here in the top of the third. But they pick up four runs at the end of two and a half. They lead it six to one. Hey fans, individual game tickets for the 2012 season at Yankee Stadium are now on sale at Yankees.com and through Ticketmaster. Get your tickets today to see the Yankees take on the rest of the American League as well as some great interleague matchups. And you don't want to miss the 66th annual Old Timers Day on Sunday, July 1st. Purchase tickets, visit Yankees.com or call Ticketmaster at 877-469-9849. Bottom of the third inning. There's Larry Rothschild. Talking it over. And that's all you can do right now. Michael Pineda. More work has to be done, that's for sure. And here comes manager Joe Girardi. Keep your chin up, kid. It's a long season. <laughs> Top of the order for the Yankees. And they'll be facing a new Philadelphia Philly pitcher. In fact, a, a very new Philadelphia Philly pitcher. Former Red Sox closer, Jonathan Papelbot in the game to face Derek Jeter. And his first pitch is over the outside corner. Papel Bond signing a big contract with the Phillies. Now become their closer. It's like Ruben Amaro, the general manager for the Phillies, had a crystal ball. You know, this Ryan Matson, the closer last year for the Phillies, coming up lame this spring with a with an elbow injury, Tommy John surgery. Papel Bond signing looking even better. Ryan Matson was supposed to be closing for the Cincinnati Reds. Here's Papelbaum, what he had to say about the Phillies and Red Sox here. Philadelphia fans tend to know the game a little better. What? Boston fans are a little more hysterical when it comes to the game of baseball. I wonder how that, uh, that quote might have been banned in Boston, huh? I think he did a little back paddling after that quote, too, <laughs> trying to clarify his comments. Oh, 1 1 pitch on the way to the Yankee captain, and it's a sinker swung on and miss, and it's 1 and 2. Well, the Red Sox uh, do play the Phillies this year in interleague play. I'm not sure where that uh, series is going to be played. That's going to be played in Philadelphia. <laughs> so he does not have to worry about uh, bringing that quote with him to Fenway Park. A one two pitch, and Gina checks the swing and fouls it off. Jack Curry's uh, with David and myself here at the bottom of the third, and we were going to talk about uh, teams that we thought might surprise a bit this year, and we'll let. Do the honors. Let Jack have the honors and go first, Jack. How about the American League and in the National? I'm going to start in the American League with the Blue Jays. Uh, I think the okay. Blue Jays are a team that you look at what they've done over the last several years, and they kind of get pushed aside because the Yankees, the Rays, and the Red Sox dominate that division. But this is a team in its last six seasons. They've had a better than 500 record five times, and that may not sound like much, but when you're playing the Yankees, the Rays, and the Red Sox, and as good as they have been, uh -huh. that means a lot to me. And I just look at the maturing of their rotation: Romero, 
Morrow, Cecil, even a guy like McGowan. And then I look at Laurie and Rasmus and Aaron Sebia. I like the young players they've assembled. A veteran player just got a base hit. The captain, Derek Jeter, with a single to center field. And he's a boy. I like Laurie, too. I think he's going to be a superstar at third base. We saw him in a home run here against the Yankees to the opposite field at this time. But even after saying all that, they could end up being an 88 to 90 win team, and that might not be good enough in, in the American League to get you that first or second wild card. So I do see them as a team on the rise. I just don't see them as a team that maybe is ready to leapfrog to the top two spots in the AL East. They have a new closer too, and Sergio Santos, who came over from the White Sox, and uh, man, he throws hard. I'm surprised the White Sox made that deal. Yeah, I, I, too. I, I didn't get that at all. Santos was on a very good contract. That's the type of guy you try and keep, not the type of guy you try and trade. Well, you know, my pick, obviously, I don't know if they're that big of a surprise. And, you know, a lot of people have been talking about them coming for years, but I think the Kansas City Royals this year are going to make some big strides. And That's my gonna, pick, too. No, yeah. <laughs> I kind of thought, you know, Kenny was thinking along those lines. You know, my second, uh, you know, not necessarily, you know, when you, when you talk about you know, teams that, that are going to be the surprise teams. Maybe not a playoff contending team, but a much improved team. I think Baltimore is going to surprise some people with a much better record than they had last year. They have nowhere to go but up. Their pitching was the worst across the board in the league. You know, head and shoulders. And so I think Baltimore's a sleeper, but obviously KC Sorry is out for the season. That's going to hurt. That that hurts. They do have Jonathan Broxton that they got from the Dodgers. He's doing pretty well this spring. Hosmer's a legitimate potential superstar. And Alex Gordon really came into his own last year. Granderson takes a pitch for a strike and it's now three and one. I think once they moved Alex Gordon to left field and got away from him being the next George Brett at third base, that's when he started to come into his own. And he had a really good year last year. It was his breakout season, and I expect him to be even better. Signed a four year contract extension today. This ball is hit well on the right center field. Going back his pitch. Looks up. This one is gone. A home run for Curtis Granderson, and it's now a 6-3 ball game. Granderson's second home run of the spring, and that one was tagged. Off the former closer of the Red Sox, Jonathan Papelbaum. And Granderson just keeps on keeping on up and out over the plate. Short and quick. Look at the foots down. Hangs onto the bat now. Quick to the ball. And the only question now is whether there's going to be a windshield out on Dale Mabry going by. And well, now it's a 6 3 ball game, and Robinson Cano's in the play. Little chopper foul. Any of the teams in the American League that uh, I, I think the other teams you expect to be in the races. You, know, you talk about the Angels and the, the Rangers. I think Detroit has the Central Division kind of wrapped up, but I do agree that the Kansas City Royals are going to be a better club if they I'm, get any type of pitching. I'm going to try and debate you guys on the Royals, and I agree that I, I, I like Mustakis and Hosmer and those guys, but they are going, their number one pitcher, I guess, would be Bruce Chen right now or yeah. Ho Shaver. I mean, it's about pitchers. Yeah, and those guys don't really do it for me. So I think until they get some pitchers, some younger guys who come up and can sort of help them. In a better way than those guys will. I'm still wondering about the Royals. Well, let's jump over to the National League. Do you have any National League teams you feel is going to surprise some people this year, Jack? Well, Kenny, I'm not going to lie that you and I talked on the field a little bit. Yeah, so we're we going did. we're going to be in alignment on the Washington Nationals. Okay. I think the Nationals are a team. They already, as you mentioned, what 10, 11, 12 games better from uh, last year, from 10 to 11. They added, they got Gio Gonzalez. They signed Edwin Jackson because nobody else would. He was out there waiting. Strasburg is back. Jordan Zimmerman. I, I like their rotation. Brad Lidge is a piece in the bullpen now. Storm will be the closer. Cano rips one towards the corner. Pence is over there quickly to cut it off. It's the third straight hit for the Yankees off Papelbon. And Cano singles around. Yeah, I like them too. I, I think. Uh, I like their third base for Brian Zimmerman. I think he's, a, he's the type of guy who could lead a club of the potential MVP. And look at the rotation, John Lanham. Chin Ming Wong also in competition. He came up with a hamstring problem this spring, and it kind of set him back a little bit. But uh, the former Yankee was throwing the ball well when he got injured. So a good starting staff. 
And I don't think the other teams in the National League East are taking those guys lightly. How long can they hold Bryce Harper down? You know, <laughs> the young phenom. It's a matter of time before he's up as well. If Kansas City had that staff, I'd be with you guys. <laughs> Pitches inside to A-Rod. Yankees trying to fight back here in the bottom of the third inning. They trail six to three. A Rod checks his swing but takes a pitch for a call strike. Now I've got a question for you. Now that the Dodgers ownership has been uh, somewhat straightened out, I mean, with the Magic Johnson's group taking over, do you think that's going to infuse some of the enthusiasm of the Dodgers out in the National League West? No, there's no doubt. I mean, there was uh, Bill Plaschke for the LA Times. I thought he had a great line in one of his columns. He said the most, I'm not going to quote it 100%, but uh -huh. it was something like the most enduring sports franchise in Los Angeles now has its most enduring athlete ever there to help guide things along. And I just think Magic Johnson's presence, he says he's going to have an office, he's going to be there every day. And just imagine how uncertain those players have been for the last couple of seasons. Now they know, they, they, they have a direction, they don't have to answer questions about that. I'm sure there'll be money put into the organization to go out and get players they couldn't have done that in the past. I, I, I definitely look for there to be a rebirth around the Dodgers and when just when you thought the Angels had kind of stolen the the LA Thunder look at what is happening with the Dodgers now. I like Magic's quotes though as far as uh, deferring to Stan Caston who's going to be the president of the club. He says he's the longtime baseball man. He knows the players and who we should get is Avon swings and misses and strikes out on a 2 2 pitch as Papelbach blows it by for the first out here in the bottom of the third. So it's not like Magic you know his magic is in basketball not in baseball. I will say this. There's no doubt they're not going to ask Magic as we take one more look at this. They're not going to ask Magic, should we go get this reliever or this pitcher? But with all due respect to Stan Caston, who I've interviewed a bunch of times, if Stan Caston's behind the batting cage and Magic is behind the batting cage, and there are 100 reporters, uh -huh. I think about 90 of them are going to probably move over towards Magic and want to talk to him. Well, you know what? If the Magic's making decisions, you know the Dodgers are going to end up with a lot of tall baseball players. Now that pitcher was coming out. Kendrick was coming, thought he was coming in the ball game, but Rich Doobie went out to the mound and left Papelbon in the game. So this is kind of an embarrassing situation for the tall right-hander as he is not officially in the game. He's going to come in favorite probably a little later on. Right now he's going to take a seat in the dugout. That's a fine in kangaroo court. Yeah, <laughs> that's a five-yard penalty in football. Yeah. Too many men on the field. Java swings and misses for strike one. But you know my sleeper in the National League uh, you know maybe not quite a sleeper but a surprise you know I really think the Mets are going to be better than anticipated they've been dogged so hard I think finally you know the whole off the field situation with the ownership and the Madoff uh, financial mess is now behind them Johan Santana has looked good this spring they're getting their number one starter back I think some of their offensive players are going to be better I think Jason Bay is going to come back they moved into fences David Wright they did move in the fences yeah. uh, at City Field I think the Mets are going to be a surprise team now whether that's good enough to get to the playoffs or not I don't know but I think they will be better than advertised well one of the things when, what happens when you move into fences that also helps the other hitters on the other teams pitches grounded foul they come in with renewed enthusiasm. I think Duda is an emerging star there. Mm -hmm. uh, Ike Davis is a strong young player. We don't know what David Wright's future there is if he's a guy they end up trading. The thing that would concern me from their spring training is yes Santana was very good but Pelfrey a guy that they really need to rely on. has had a terrible spring. In fact I think I read online this morning there was some feeling during meetings that they would just release it. There yeah. was a story yeah. in the Daily News yeah. that said it was at least it was at least talked about it was thrown around at a meeting which obviously would have saved them some money if they did that but they decided against it. Well somebody would jump on him in a hurry. No balls and two strikes on Eric Chavez. Cano's at first with one out and it's a swing and a miss and now there's two outs. So Papelbon has bounced back after giving up a single home run and another single to strike out Rodriguez and Chavez. Now there's two down. Well, Papelbon, even though he's got knocked around a little bit here, his velocity's been fine. He's made enough good pitches. He's got his work in. Here's Russell Martin, who drew a walk in the second inning. 
I just think it's going to be a five year baseball once again. I, I can't wait for the regular season to start. Spring training games get old after a while. This is about the time of spring training when I was thinking. What am I doing up here? You know, but it's interesting because I said the same thing to Derek Jeter before the game. I said, Derek, how many hits do you need down here? He said, every time up. <laughs> so he wasn't quite ready. He said, a few more games and I'll be ready to go. There's a swing of the bass. I overheard that conversation, yeah. Kenny, and I was surprised by his answer because you're right. Guys get to this point and you think that guys are ready to just kind of move on to the season, but he basically said, yeah, every time up, I'm looking to get a hit, and I guess he's not ready to, to be right there yet. Or if he thinks he's going to hit a thousand, one or the other. <laughs> it would be a first if he does it this year. Pitch is fouled off by Martin. Count remains, no balls and two strikes. So, Jack, we, we've covered it a litany of uh, subjects in tonight's uh, inning with Jack Curry here. Is there anything else you want to throw at us, Jack? We got the surprise teams in. Yeah. I mean, just looking around baseball, I mean, like you said, I like the Tigers in the Central. I, I think Texas and the Angels, uh, there's a new dynamic in the American League because it was Yankees, Red Sox for so long, but you look at the Rangers and the Angels in the West now, really looking forward to what is going to transpire this year, and I'm a fan of the second wild card. I, I like the idea yeah. of giving more teams a chance and I like that it makes the division more important. I didn't like the fact that teams could kind of coast that last week or 10 days if you had a lead. You got you have to want to have that division title now. Oh, well, Papelbon, he was on the mound and gave up the hit to Robert Andino that uh, knocked the Red Sox out of the playoff picture last year. That turned out to be his last pitch as a member of the Boston Red Sox. Now he gets to turn over a new leaf here with the Philadelphia Phillies, another strong team, and he's going to be closing for some big time starters. Sinker is low, and the count is run full at three and two. And he was smart to sign that contract for a number of reasons, but if we saw how, if, as we saw the rest of the offseason unfold, and a lot of closers waiting for jobs and guys ending up getting one year deals, David mentioned Madsen, who ended up getting a one year, $8 million deal. A very nice deal that Papelbon side four years 50 million runners on the move the three two pitch is fouled off and in fact didn't Madsen have like a three year deal done with the Phillies but then all of a sudden Papelbon came in the picture and that that deal was off the table I think that's a he said he said thing uh -huh. the Phillies are saying Ruben Amar was saying no Madsen's people were saying yes but obviously there wasn't a signed contract or there would have been a grievance filed, David. You, you help me on that. Wouldn't there have been some sort of Absolutely argument not. over it? Yeah. yeah, it was obviously not a done deal. Ball four. The inning continues, and the Yankees have the tie run at the plate. Papelbon walks Russell Martin on a 3 2 pitch, and I believe this time he might be coming out of the game. This is it. Yeah, it's the second trip to the mound. He's got to come out. Where's Kyle Kendrick? Is he in the dugout? No. This time he's going to come into the ball game. We'll be back with more here at the bottom of the third. It's a six to three game. Stay tuned.
Later tonight, the Nets kick off the first game of a four-game West Coast swing when they take on the Golden State Warriors. Nets pregame coverage starts tonight. After the game of 10, then Ian Eagle and Mike Patello have the call. It's only on the S. Well, the bottom of the third inning continues, and Kyle Kendrick indeed is in the ball game now. But he's in there with two men on and two outs. He will face Andrew Jones. Now, Jack Curry is with us, David Cohn and myself, and Jack. You've been in spring training longer than anybody else with the rip. Yes, group. Are you ready for the regular season to start? I am ready for the regular season to start. Uh -huh. I am ready to get into the studio, team up with Bob Lorenz and Jared Boschnack and do our work from in the studio. I love spring training, though. I think spring training, from a reporting standpoint, that that's like if you're going to run a marathon, that, that's your ro road work. You, you get a base for the rest of the season. You talk to guys. Ball gets away. The runners are going to move up. Cano goes to third. Russell Martin goes to second. That should be a pass ball. Looked like Ruiz should have had that one. So Ruiz is setting up down the middle of the plate. It almost looks like he just either got distracted. I don't think it was a cross up, but just off the web of the glove. Yeah, that's a pass ball. Two balls and no strikes now on Andrew Jones. But you're ready to go back home, aren't you? Jack? Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely ready to go. Florida is great, but home is home. Ball grounded foul. I mean, it's a chance to cut the winner short with what winner there was this year. It seems like it, it's just so much more intimate in spring training, especially for yeah. not only the fans here at Legends Field. You get closer to the players, more interaction. I'm sure that's the same for the media as well. It absolutely is. And I mean, I had a 10 minute conversation with Mark Teixeira about the Tampa Bay Rays today, which is stuff that I'll use in April. I'll use all year long, just his perspective on their rotation. And sometimes you go to Yankee Stadium and it's not as easy to maybe grab those guys. And that's why I do think spring training is very important. And as you said, for fans, this is the time to go. I always tell fans that Go to spring training. You'll, you'll get much closer to the players and, and see a, a lot of things you might not have the chance to see once the team heads north. You'll get more autographs as Andrew Jones walks. And the Yankees reload the bases. Rich Doobie's pen is going to run out of ink this season. Right Kendrick Number walks six for his man he faces. Justin, and Justin Maxwell will come up with the bases loaded. Justin Maxwell up with the bases loaded. He swings and misses strike one. The Yankees have come up with two runs here in the bottom of the third inning. Now 6-3 as Maxwell hits one in the left field for a base hit. Cano scores. Here comes Martin. The throw to the play will not be in time, and it's now a six to five game as Justin Maxwell continues to impress this friend. He now has three runs batted in tonight and 11 during spring training. Well, he looks like a big leaguer, and he's been aggressive jumping on that inside pitch. But very impressive just his approach at the plate. He's not overmatched at all. He looks like he belongs. You know what? He's in a good position. He's out of options. And the Yankees are going to have to keep him. And if they try and send him out, the way he's been playing this spring, and there's some teams looking for some outfielders. Here's Brett Gardner. Tying runs at second. Swings at the first pitch. Grounded. Foul. Down the first base side. There are only three umpires tonight, so the home plate umpire had to make the call. And that is Mark Wagner. So Wagner made the call. And Gardner has to come back. When Gardner got down to first, it appeared he was looking for an umpire. But the other umpires are stationed at second and third. It's interesting, Ed. Those are like minor league crews, only three umpires. Yankees have batted around here in the third inning. Foul ball and the count quickly goes over two.
There is Derek Jeter who led the inning off with a single. And eventually scored on the home run by Curtis Granderson. Side for ball one. You know the way Derek Jeter thinks. He's probably thinking 3,500, 4,000 hits now. Now that he's by 3,000, you know, I think, you know, his attitude's always been, you know, he wants to get a hit every time up. Always interacting with the fans right there, Jack. Talking about the intimacy of spring training. Derek's very consistent with that. But I guarantee you, in his mind, he's thinking he's thinking 4,000 hits now. Two and two to go. David had the chance to interview him last year, maybe 10 or 12 days before he got 3,000. And I knew if I said 4,000 that he'd probably shoot me down. So I said to him, is 3,500 uh, on the radar for you? Do you think 3,500 is a place that you could get? And he didn't say no. But, but I think you're absolutely right. Jeter is a guy who he's just going to keep piling them up. And then when it's over, he'll, he'll, he'll lift his head up and say, okay, I'm at this number. Foul ball, and that's going to reach the seats. Well, that's been the beauty of Jeter his whole career, the captain. I mean, it's about today. It's about the team. It's always team first. It's always about what you got to do today at bat to at bat. You know, maybe one reason he didn't answer Jack is because it's team first with him. He didn't want to put a number out there that would shine the spotlight on him. Yankees with two on and two outs. They've scored four times. It's now a six to five ball game. It's been wide open. Pitchers have struggled here tonight. Inside the counters run full at three and two. Philly scored four in the top of the third. The Yankees have answered with four of their own here in the bottom half of the inning. The runners will be going. Jones from second and Maxwell from first on this three two pitch to Brett Gardner. Jack, you might as well do the rest of the game. You've been up here so long. Yeah. <laughs> He's been in this. Here this inning as long as he's been here all spring. This is payback for those one, two, three innings. Here's the payoff pitch. And it's foul tip. We'll do it all over again. The runners have to return. Jones will head back to second. Maxwell will head back to first. There's one guy that's happy, Kevin Long, the hitting coach. Pitch once again. Runners go and it's hit on the ground to first. Wigginton has it. And the Yankees bat around, but they scored four times. The first two runs coming on the home run by Curtis Granderson to deep right center field. It's a six to five game as we head to the fourth.
Next Friday afternoon, the quest for 28 begins in St. Petersburg, where the Yankees kick off the 2012 season against the division rival Rays. Join the Yes Network for complete team coverage of all the opening day pageantry, including the lineups and the first pitch from Tropicana Field. 2012 regular season starts next Friday at 2. Right here at Yes, and we can't wait. New pitcher for the Yankees is Corey Wade. Jack Curry's here with us. We're going to get into some other topics here. You know, we, we picked the, the surprise teams. We might as well keep on going. It. You got any picks for the MVP? There's the butt. A Rod's throw, and the play is made as he throws out Juan Pierre. One down. I'm going with A Rod as the MVP yeah. based on that play right there. <laughs> If, if we're going to we're going to see a replay here Pierre is a guy and Kenny you and I have talked about this is a guy who's always out there he's always laying those bunts down this is a beautiful bunt, but this is a better play. yeah and Chavez too able to slap the tag on Pierre there play well, right guarding against the bunt was in on the grass and uh, Pierre is out number one so David you want to go first yes I will uh, you know, I really think that uh, the guy for me who's been the best offensive player in the American League has been Miguel Cabrera. Okay. For the last several years, three, four, five years, I think offensively, saver metrics, inside numbers, he's been the best offensive player. I think his move to third base, really admirable the way he's handled it. He's my pick to be the MVP this year. Jack? I'm going to go with the guy who had been the best player in the National League for the longest of time and then now is in the American League. I, I know I'm not going out on a limb here, but I'm going to pick Pujols. I'm going to think that he has a very big year with the Angels to start things off. Victorino has a base hit. Now, if he has a big year, sometimes there's what they did last year. It's somewhat of an off sure year for Pujols not getting a hundred runs around him right on the doorstep, but didn't get it. The feeling is that sometimes a player jumps league, he doesn't get the support he should in the MVP ballot. Although you go back years ago, and it was kind of hard not to vote for Frank Robinson because he won the Triple Crown when he came over from the National League to the American League. And Pujols is quite capable of putting up Triple Crown type numbers. Here's Jimmy Rollins. And Cabrera changing positions might affect him. You know, he's worried more about playing third base, which has uh, already been difficult. He got hit in the eye with a ground ball this spring. And if we have other guys that we could throw out there, Kenny, there's a guy playing right behind Corey Wade at second base right yeah. now. Robinson Cano was winging MVP at some point in his career. It might not be 2012, but I mean, this guy, he's the best player on the Yankees right now. We think about A Rod and we think about Jeter and Rivera, and sometimes those names pop to the forefront first, but he's their best offensive player, their best defensive player. He will win an MVP at some point. Good stop by Russell Martin. I have the same feeling, but for me, I feel for a Yankee to win, and I, my pick is Cano as well. I, I kind of feel that he's got a chance, but for him to win it, he really kind of has to blow everybody else away because I think there is a bias among some of the writers around the league. They're not going to vote for a Yankee if they, if they can help it. So I think that he's really going to have to have one of those years where he hits around 340 and he hits close to 30 home runs or maybe more and drives in 120 something runs. And it, it's something that he's capable of doing. See, A Rod's won it twice as a Yankee, but he really bombed the opposition. They, they had no chance of beating him in the MVP. And especially if the Yankees go on to win. That pitch is fouled off by Rollins. And the count holds it two and two. If Cano gets those kind of numbers, though, especially doing it as a second baseman, yeah. and then he has one of those sparkling defensive years where you're saying, what? He's made three errors the whole year? Yeah. That kind of thing. But you're right. Sometimes when you're playing on a team that's filled with so many good players, it's very easy for some writers to make the argument of, well, they won 97 games. What would they have won without him? 92, et cetera, et cetera. Good stop by Chapman. Steps on second. Now they have the run of Victorino and a run down. And he is tagged out by Derek Jeter, so a double play to end the inning. And uh, some pleasant truths between Victorino and Jeter. So the Phillies are retired here in the top of the fourth. We played three and a half. It's a six five ball game. Hey, no harm, no foul. We'll be right back with the bottom half of the fourth inning.
Tonight's game on Yes is brought to you in part by Cadillac. Visit CadillacTriState.com to find a dealer near you. By Five Hour Energy, when you got to get stuff done. And by the really big sales event, real deals, big inventory, now at your Honda dealer. Derek Jeter's going to lead it off here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Takes a pitch up high for ball one. So we've covered our MVPs. Now let's move to the pitching side. And, of course, that means uh, David has to go first. And uh, how about the American League Cy Young? Well, I, I use sort of the same criteria that I use for my MVP pick. It's Jeter with another hit. Hey, maybe he's going to hit a thousand this year. Right back up the middle. Nice range by the young second baseman. Yeah, but he's the center fielder, number 14. So, Curtis. So, my pick, same as I said with, with Miguel Cabrera, 14. I think a, I give great thanks to a guy who's year in and year out all over that award and he hasn't won it yet. I think Cabrera, over the last four or five years, has been all over the MVP award and fallen just short. I think the guy is Sabathia. CC Sabathia, year in and year out, is always all over the Cy Young Award. Round 20 games. I think this is the year he finally breaks through and gets it. You mean he's going to beat out Verlander, who was so dominant last year, not only won the Cy Young, but won the MVP? I think it's going to be hard for Verlander to match the, those numbers that he did last year. I think there's going to be a little bit of a regression uh, to back to his normal average, which is still very good for Verlander. But, but I think this is Sabathia's year. Now Verlander had some uh, outstanding numbers 24 wins ERA you could see uh, just dominant first 24 game winner in Major League Baseball since Randy Johnson in 2002 you think those numbers are going to slide a bit even though the Tigers will probably win the division that was just a, a remarkable career year for Verlander and uh, I think he will be dominant once again but I think it's going to be very hard for him to do that again because it could it be because of the workload that he had last year? Workload and just the law of averages. You uh -huh. know, they're, they're, it's just, you know, he, he's already, you know, well established and you know what, what his mean is or what his average year is, which is outstanding. But I think he was just, you know, a cut above, just a special year last year that is just hard to duplicate it in, in, in back to back years. Jack? I love David's argument about Sabathia because if you go back to last year, probably the first three plus months of the season, Sabathia was right there with Verlander. It was August and September where where CC's numbers became subpar. But all of that being said, I'm, I'm going with Verlander because I think even if there is a regression, we saw those numbers and those numbers are sick numbers in the American League to pitch the way that he did. So even if he if he wins 22 and the ERA goes slightly up, I mean, his whip was under one. If the whip goes to 1.06 or something like that, I still like what Verlander does. I, I like that this guy goes out there and has confidence in so many of his pitches and he attacks. He pitches with a swagger. He basically goes out there and says, I'm getting you out. And it's just a matter of time before you're in the dugout. So he would be my choice. You know, I, I agree with those two guys as being a definite candidate. So if you're going to go, there are two of my top three, though. And my guy that I'm going to pick this year to win the Cy Young is way out west. I'm going with Jared Weaver of the Angels. I think that here's a guy who's starting to come into his own. And not that the other two couldn't win and pass him. I think they could. But I think Jared Weaver definitely is going to be in the mix for the Cy Young Award this year. Can we give Mark Teixeira a vote? Because when I spoke to him today, he threw James Shields in the mix. And we see Granderson is being replaced here. He said Shields is a guy. If, if he said if the Rays would score more runs and it would boost his win total, which I know isn't what everybody always focuses on. But a lot of times with starting pitchers, you do look at that win total. He said Shields is a guy who he puts right in that mix. Top five pitcher in uh, the American League. Well, a couple of years ago, King Felix won in Seattle. He only won 13 games. And he had a record of 13 and 12. So... I guess there's all kinds of ways of winning this award. Well, you, you know, when it's a great pick, James Shields. I mean, he had more complete games than most teams, entire teams did. James complete game, Shields. Cano's at the plate with two runners on it, nobody out. Look out, it's inside, a ball and a strike. This has been one of those nights where the hitters are, are punishing the pitchers. I know it's hard for you to watch, David. It's, 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 yeah, it is. You got to look away. <laughs> I tell you, if you're in the dugout, you know, you might look down on the bench and send all the extra pitchers home right now. Just go on home. Get out of here. Take a shower. You know, it's a high towering fly ball in the left field that has Juan Pierre on the move near the warning track. Tagging up is Derek Jeter. He's going to attempt to make it to third. The throw is not in time. 
Heads up base running by the Yankee captain. And now the Yankees have the tight run at third with one out. I think he knows that Juan Pierre does not have a strong throwing arm. One thing about Jeter when you talk about his abilities, it's, it's always about smarts, and you're right, Kenny. You don't play the Phillies that much, but he knows Juan Pierre from his American League days. He's backing up on the ball. He's retreating. There's no way he's going to be able to throw Jeter out as he's retreating on that ball. So first to third with one out, Alex Rodriguez to come to the plate. He didn't catch it in the – you're supposed to get back and have some momentum going towards your throw, but that wasn't the case. A Rob with a chance to tie the game up. He hits a ground ball to the right side, and it is going to be caught by Galvis and throws the pitch of covering. But on the play, Jeter will score, and it's a 6 6 ball game. A Rod almost snuck it through the right side. Galvis showing some range on the right side of the infield. Give A Rod a run batted in. Galvis has covered some ground up the middle earlier in the inning, and this one too. And that's what you do if you're a pitcher. You break right away and you get there and hope that Galvis is going to make the play, and he does. So now there are two outs. And Galvis had to sort of reroute, too. And Chris Dickerson, who's running for Granderson, is in second. And the Phillies pitchers are going to love that, even though Chase Utley uh, is out with injuries and it's uncertain when he's going to come back. Well, you got a kid at second base that's going to catch the ball. Eric Chavez swings at the first pitch, fouls it off. We now have a 6 6 ball game. The Yankees were down 6 to 1 at one point. And now have rallied the tie. When the Phillies were still negotiating with Rollins and there wasn't a definite that he was going to come back, Galvis's name was coming up a lot because he played about 30 games at Lehigh Valley last year at shortstop. And David, you're right about that range. He really covers a lot of ground out there. Inside for a ball. Voted the best prospect of the best minor leaguer in the Phillies organization last year. The Phillies have gotten caught short, you know, with all the injuries. Obviously, Utley uh, headlining that list. And I think Ruben Amaro almost said that he kind of regretted letting Wilson Valdez go in the offseason, another middle infielder that could have given them some depth. That pitch is high for a ball, and it's two and one. <laughs> so, you have any thoughts on the National League MVP? Wow. Yeah. yeah, we have to dig a little deeper here. You do have to dig a little deeper uh -huh. in the National League. Um, you know, it, can you go back to back? You know, it, you look at Matt Kemp and the numbers he had last year, yeah. really coming into his own. It's hard to go back to back. Once again, he had sort of a career year. And, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's tough to go against Kemp, but you know, I would dig a little deeper, I think. I think, you, you know, Give me a minute to dig a little deeper, Jim. Yeah. I'll let you jump in. Yeah, we, we think we talk about so much about American League. We don't think quite as much about the National. You got Joey Votto in Cincinnati, good player. I got one for you. All I'm right. going Troy Tulowitzki. That's that's my guy Ooh. because again, he plays a, a, a commanding position uh -huh. on the field at shortstop. And if I see a shortstop put up the kind of numbers that he has put up, now again, the Rockies, the Rockies have to win because uh -huh. you can't. You can't go 30, 120, and hit 290, and your team wins 85 games. That's not going to get it done. We saw how Braun beat out Kemp last year. But I'm going to go with Tulowitz. Good call. Pitch is fouled back, and the count is full of 3 2. Look at Tulowitz. Seventh overall pick in 2005 by the Rockies. Rookie of the year runner up to Ryan Braun in 2007. Two time All Star, two gold gloves. Where's number two in honor of Derek Jeter? And also has signed a Long term, like a lifetime contract with the Colorado Rockies. Like, what is it, 10, 15 right. years? He deal? had a few years left on his deal, Kenny, and I think they re upped him for 10 more. There's a base hit in the right field. Dickerson rounding third. And he scores, and the Yankees take a 7 to 6 lead. Eric Chavez with a two out single. But Dickerson can run, can he? Man, he bolted it from second base. The Yankees have come all the way back from a six to one deficit now leads seven to six. Well, what a luxury for the Yankees to have Eric Chavez, a gold glove defender, to back up Alex at third and just a legitimate bat. I mean, he still swings it. He still has that bat speed. Still very much of a threat in the batter's box. Here's Russell Martin, who has walked twice and scored a run, and he takes a pitch outside for a ball. Did I make a pitch? 
I don't think so. Not yet. You know, I, I have the feeling I like what Matt Kemp did last year. I mean, he, he was just awesome for the Dodgers. And I'm going to go with the guy who finished second last year. He finished second to Ryan Braun. I think that he's going to have the tie. I think Braun is going to miss Prince Fielder batting behind him. So I think that with the fact that he finished second gives him some momentum coming into this year. And maybe playing with a little bit more of a chip on his shoulder to have a, I, I'm not going to say he's having an be even better year, but I think he's going to have a year where he's going to get the MVP. He's talked about wanting to go 50 50. So if he does that, oh. I, th I think you're going to be all right. Kenny. Tough, tough. He goes 50 50. He's a guy still a young player. He's looking for that kind of Tulowitzki contract that uh, that we've talked about. And that's a good choice. I mean, there's some good choices in the NL. Martin will look chopping towards third. Going to be a tough play. It's a foul ball for Polanco. You know, Jack, things have changed so much with the voting and the writers. There's so much emphasis on defense now, and you know, sabermetrics and WAR and a lot of the, uh, yeah. the, the new the new stats for, for measuring uh, productivity on the defensive side of the ball. So uh, I think we saw that in Kenny, as you mentioned, with, with King Felix with the 13 wins, and people looked at the inside numbers and ended up voting him in based on. Sabermetrics and mathematics. See, here's my deal with that. He won. Thir he was 13 to 12 that year. There was a game he was losing to the Yankees, and uh, I think Jabba Chamberlain gave up a grand slam home run to Jose Lopez, and he ended up getting a no decision or maybe even the win in that game. Would he have won the Cy Young with a losing record at 12 and 13, even with all those numbers? As Russell Martin gets a base hit, he's now one for one. The Yankees bats have come alive here tonight. Yeah, it's a great question, Kenny. And David is right. That was a bit of a watershed moment in the voting for Felix Hernandez to have won that award. Lincecum had won it with 16 wins, but to win it with 13 victories, but you look at every other statistic and yeah. what he did that year. I mean, six or seven other statistics where he was first or second. Just amazing numbers. So it's not so much just the wins, because it used to be if you had the most wins, you, you were almost guaranteed a chance to win the Cy Young. Here's a pitch to Andrew Jones that misses for a ball. I think my point, Jack, and my question to you would be is if you could go back and revisit, say, 20 years ago, some, you know, the same races, the MVP voting, the Cy Young voting, I think you'd have different outcomes based on the criteria that the writers and the, especially the ones with the votes, obviously, use nowadays. I think you're right. I don't have an example in front of me, but but Kenny's right. I, I remember in the 70s, this guy won 24 games. He's winning it. Even if his ERA is 3.6 and there was a guy who won 17 and his ERA was 2.8 and his strikeout to walk ratio was better. Those statistics and those type of things weren't as prominent 20, 30 years ago. Line drive by Andrew Jones is going to score Eric Chavez heading to third and being thrown out to the final out and in it is Russell Martin. Well, the Yankees do pick up a run and uh, on the play, the final out came after the run scored. So the Yankees now have the lead eight to six over the Philadelphia Phillies as we head to the fifth inning.
As we go to the top of the fifth, I'm going to have to clarify something that happened in the bottom half of the fourth inning. I thought the run counted. I thought home plate umpire Mark Wagner said it counted. Instead, the run does not count. Russell Martin was thrown out before Eric Chavez crossed home plate on our Audi scoreboard. It's the Yankees seven and the Philadelphia Phillies six. And now joining us, uh, Joe Girardi from the Yankee dugout, the Yankee manager. And Joe's kind of been a wide open game tonight. Yes, it has. A lot of runs, a lot of base hits, and um, some miscues. And, uh, you know, here we go. We got a football score. <laughs> Let's start with your starting pitcher tonight. It was kind of a rough night for Michael Pineda. I, I saw you go down and talk to the youngster. What'd you have to say to him, Joe? Well, I mean, you got to keep your head up. I mean, you just got to keep working at it. And, um, you know, it seemed to me that he didn't really have a lot of location on his fastball tonight. And um, they hit him. I mean, the Phillies are a team that's dangerous, and, and, and they hit him. But yeah, number one, it seemed he was falling behind on counts and then yeah. had to come in with the pitchers that were much too good. Yeah, he didn't get to use his slider and his changeup a lot tonight. He was behind in the count, and uh, they made him pay. Now, Joe, uh, it, it looked to me like he's getting around his four-seamer a lot. Like, every four-seamer seemed to cut on him. I don't know if that's something he's working on. or No, is, no. <laughs> I mean, it looked like, yeah, maybe he's just he's getting around that four-seamer and that it, everyone seemed to cut. And loses location. Yeah, at times he'll throw some fastballs that cut, but not like he did tonight. I mean, it seemed like everyone cut. I mean, that's what Russell told me was happening as well. And, um, you know, he was just really off tonight. Joe, he obviously came in a lot of scrutiny on him this spring training. You've answered so many questions about him. What What's next for Michael? Will we see him again in five days? He's going to split that start with uh, Freddie, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to talk about what's next for him and how we do it. Uh -oh. In the air, the left center field on the run is Dickerson and lays out and comes up with it. What a catch by Chris Dickerson. Wow, great play by Dickerson. Great jump. Got Grandy out just in time. I don't want Grandy yeah. diving like that. <laughs> well, Dickerson showed great speed scoring from second base on that base hit, but even more so here, Joe, as we look at it again. Lays out, holds on to it. Like a wide receiver. Yeah, he is extremely athletic. And uh, one of the things that he can do is he can play every position. He can play left, center, and right because of his athleticism. He's got great speed. Well, an excellent play leading off the top of the fifth inning. There's one down to bring up Hunter Pence. That's what I'm saying if I'm on the mound. Wow. Look <laughs> about Corey Wade. He got a mouthful of grass out there, too. <laughs> it's probably pretty dry, as dry as it's been here this uh, spring, too. So is this next side session for uh, Pineda is pretty important. I'm sure yeah. everybody's going to be watching closely. I mean, obviously, we, we have talked about we have to make some decisions and, and we have to make them fairly quickly here. And, uh, you know, we've been through our rotation a number of times and uh, we'll have to see what we're going to do next. Well, you know, there's a lot to like there. I mean, I like his delivery. Um, you know, we didn't get a chance to see a lot of his secondary pitches, but I, I think, you know, there's, there's something mechanical there that you know, that needs to be worked out. When we saw him throw last year in Seattle, he was really true and straight with that four-seamer, and that's how your velocity gets up. And, you know, I think that probably explains maybe a little bit of the velocity dip, maybe just getting around that thing just a little bit. Yeah, getting around the baseball. I mean, you know better than anything, Coney. I mean, mechanics are so important in, in everything that you do, location, your velocity. Another fly ball. This time Derek Jeter retreats to short left center field. He's was he called off or not? The ball falls in. And Hunter Pence is going to hustle the second with a double. Miscommunication between the shortstop and the left fielder. Something you don't see very often. No. And uh, it's something that shouldn't happen because they've played enough together. Uh, but, but it does. I mean, when you're in this game long enough, you're going to see things that are going to surprise you from time to time. Uh, we look at it again, and the ball fell equally distant between the two. I believe either one of them could have made the play. Joe, one last thing on Pineda. We're, we're just watching a replay of the ball falling between uh, Brett and Derek there. I know that you've answered a ton of questions about this. He had, I think he had some 94s. Do you think that the questions about the velocity or the talk about the velocity are impacting him? Because I know you've mentioned multiple yeah. times, hey, guys can get people out. When they're pitching in the low 90s, 92, 93, do you think it's impacting him at all? Oh, I think it could, um, you know, because he is a young man. And, uh, you know, he's not a guy that's been through the big leagues and has had to make adjustments, you know, during the course of years. And, and you know, has had to deal with different things. I mean, he's been in the big leagues one year. He's very young. And it could have affected him. It well could have. 
How about the effect of the trade itself coming over to a new team trying to impress right away? Yeah, and, and, and that's probably somewhat a great block by Russell. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it, it could be shocking. I mean, there's been a lot that has happened to this young man in a short period of time. And, um, you know, this game, we know that you got to learn how to handle things and you got to learn how to handle adversity and, and get back up is because you're going to go through it. Everyone's going to go through it. Speaking of handling adversity, your, your team was down six to one tonight. They fought back, and you must be happy with the way the bats are going. Yeah, I am. Um, we've had some miscues in, in the, the field, though, that cost us a bunch of runs tonight. Including this one right here yeah. as the uh, Penn scores. We had a gift double, and now Polanco delivers with a base hit. It's now a 7 7 game. Well, Joe, you have to be impressed with some of your young players. I mean, a guy, let's, let's throw out there Justin Maxwell. I mean, he's opened some highs and yes, had he another has. big game, and he's out of options. And, boy, that, that's got to be a tough call, too. Yeah, I mean, he's played extremely well. And he came back from a, a, a you know, pretty serious shoulder injury last year um, and had to rehab and was, was having a good year in AAA. And it was unfortunate that he got hurt, but uh, he's played well. We've had a lot of young kids come up and play well, and you're going to see some more of them in this game tonight as we move forward. I noticed that Maxwell's getting a lot of playing time. Is that for your eyes or everybody else's as well? No, well, that's, you know, for us. I mean, uh -huh. We want to see how he's doing. And um, a couple of good pitches by Corey to bounce back. I mean, this would be big if he could get a double play here and kind of pick us up a little bit. But, I mean, we're very curious about him. He missed a lot of last year. I think he went out about May 15th. And he, too, can play all three outfield positions if need be. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Wigginton has struck out. Nice bounce back. Two down now. Hey, little Coney right there. Didn't quite drop down as far, Coney, but a little Laredo. Yeah, he's got the ability to throw sliders and uh, fastballs down there. The element of surprise, and, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's got that natural knack to be able to do that. Yeah, he's very athletic, um, and, and, and that helps him. He hasn't thrown a split down there like you have, though. Joe, one of the guys on your team who throws probably as many pitches as anyone is Freddie Garcia. He threw six and two thirds of minor league ball today, only gave up one run against the Triple A Pirates. What did you think of? I know you saw some of that. What did you think about him and, and how he's looked this spring? I, I saw four innings and he looked really good. And you know, some people might say, "Well, it was Triple A." Well, he he saw Alvarez was there, and there was another guy there from the Pirates. I mean, he saw a couple of big league hitters that probably had about five or six at bats off him. So. I mean, he faced some stiff competition. He's pitched well all year. Fly ball to center field. This should do it here in the fifth inning as Dickerson puts it away. Dickerson started with a great put out. Now, routine out. Joe, thanks for being with us. Thanks, guys. Waiting on this next field goal. It's a 7 7 game. Well, fans, tomorrow night, don't miss the Yes Network special event, 10 Years of Yes. 
It's the story of the magical moments and remarkable people that made up our dramatic first decade, including memories from the athletes, the fans, and the personalities who witness history. Ten years of yes, tomorrow at 7. That's right here on yes. Another good crowd on hand. Here's Steinbrenner Field, and we got a big pitch in the ball game for the Philadelphia Phillies. For the Yankees, the right field is number 64. Last year in Clearwater, he's done the state. Maxwell. Julio Rodriguez. I had a good year. 16 and 7, 2.76. He's moving on up. Right now, he's facing Justin Maxwell. Here in the bottom of the fifth inning, Maxwell's had a good day. Our Audi scoreboard, 7-7. Outside ball two, two balls and no strikes. Jack Curry still with us. Jack, we want to get you a chair. You've been standing up all these innings. I like this vantage point. I like to be able to stand and, and get a look at what's going on from up here. So that's the way Jim Cott used to do it. Yeah, he stood up. He was a stand up guy too. <laughs> You know, Maxwell, we've talked about him a few times in this game, and, and I wonder, without getting inside his head, the fact that he knows he has no options left, I mean, he comes in, I think you feel freer this spring training. He knows that somewhere along the line, he's either going to be a Yankee if he made the Yankee roster, or he might end up somewhere else where that team wants him. So I have to believe that that eases his mind a little bit. We saw his numbers in spring training hitting over 350. And David, I think you said it very well. This guy just looks like a player. When, when you look at him, even during batting practice, you say he belongs. That's six foot five, that 230 pounds. And he has a good swing of this one and fouls it straight back. Phillies have made a number of changes defensively. We'll uh, get to you as we go along here. I think the thing you really want to see with this young kid is, you know, we, he, we've seen he can have a fastball, but fastball's on the inner half. He's quick and gets to it. You know, how much can he see that steady diet of low and away and sliders and off-speed pitches? The big league pitchers are going to test him with if, if he gets up there. Right here. Three balls and two strikes. His last time up, Maxwell delivered a two-run single. Seven seven game. And he draws a lead off walk here in the fifth inning. Maxwell has already stolen a base in tonight's game. And we'll see how Joe Girardi wants to play it here. This has been kind of a wide open offensive game. Does he have Brett Gardner trying to lay down a button? It's something Gardner's very adept at doing. Well, those two guys got some war stories, huh? Tommy and Manuel going back, as you said, Kenny Elway. To rookie ball, 1989. Did you guys catch the play Tomei made yesterday on ESPN? The highlight. He made a nice diving play along the first baseline. I saw him today. I said, oh, "That was quite a play that you made." And he said, "Yeah, I used to be able to do that all the time." There's the butt, and the ball kicks foul. Well, it must have hit a clump of dirt or something because it made an immediate right turn. He said he used to do that all the time. Right. He said, I think he meant in his younger days he had a lot more mobility, and obviously now he's he's more of a DH type. Being in the National League, he's going to have to play some at first base, especially until Howard comes back. Yeah, this is his second time around with the Philadelphia Phillies. He's going back to 2003, and he hit 47 home runs with the Philadelphia Phillies. Here's the. Uh, New defensive alignment for the Philadelphia Phillies. Luna now at third. Nixon first. Schneider doing the catching. Well, Charlie Manuel now the all-time winningest manager in Phillies history. And he passed up Gene Mock. 646 wins. Gardner tries to lay down another butt and fouls it off. The count is 0-2. I played for Gene Mock in Montreal. Very good manager. He liked the butt in the first inning. Six foot six. If he lays that, he's gonna be foul territory, won't he? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know he's itching to go again. You know, another point about Charlie Manuel. You know, you mentioned that he's probably he's not a sabermetrics guy, kind of an old school guy. Uh -huh. There's just something about Charlie Manuel. You know, he just when he talks baseball and his southern draw, he just makes a lot of sense. You know, he's got a, a, a quick wit, 
an unbelievable memory. I was talking to him about games I pitched against him you know, 15 years ago. He, he was he, he had unbelievable recall on sequences and pitches and you know, old school baseball man, but sharp as a whip and uh, very underrated. And you know, as far as uh, his baseball strategy, originally from West Virginia, now makes his home in uh, New Jersey. Little chop it towards short. Jimmy Rollins charging, comes up with it, flips the second, and they call him out. They called Maxwell out. I don't know if Galvis came off the bat. So Maxwell forced the second. Please go to him first. Number two, Aaron Well, the only chance is at a second base at Forrest because Gardner can fly. And you see, boy, Galvis with an unbelievable play just to catch the ball. Now, whether he stays on the bag or not, we'll see right here. Now, I think that right foot came off the bat. But instead, it's a force play. Now we'll keep an eye on Gardner at first. I think he wanted to get that leg out of the way of the sliding Justin Maxwell. Derek Jeter's two for three tonight. Manuel, though, David, has had quite a career. He played in Japan. Yeah. He was a power hitter over there. I read a very interesting story in one of the Philadelphia newspapers recently written by uh, Anthony Gargano. He spent the day with Manuel. Eight, nine, ten hours into the day, Manuel wanted to make a hitting point. He screams to his fiance, where's my bat? Where's my bat? She's looking for the bat. He throws a magazine down at home plate, and it's 10 or 11 o'clock at night, and he was so obsessed with making this hitting point that he made his own little hitter's box, his batter's box right there, and showed the point that he was trying to make about, basically it was about strike zone discipline, and he was a big disciple of Ted Williams, and, and we all know the Ted Williams book, The Science of Hitting, and where you're going to get your best average when you hit pitches that are in your zone or in the strike zone. But it was a it was a very well done story, and I'm I'm like you. When Charlie Manuel talks, I, I, I something interesting is usually going to be said. He is admired and respected by his players for sure, and uh, I guess you could call him a player's manager. Although he has made some disciplinary moves uh, with the, he sat down Jimmy Rollins one day. Jimmy Rollins either showed up late or didn't hustle on a particular play and sat him down for the remainder of the game. And I think. Maybe the next game as well. And I think Rollins backed him up. I think uh -huh. Rollins said he what he did was right. One and one to count on Jeter. Gardner's on the move. The pitch is a ball, and the ball squirts out of the hand of the catcher Brian Schneider and give Gardner a stolen base. He is now six and zero this spring. So Gardner was unable to bunt Maxwell the second, but he gets down the second with one out on a stolen base. Well, real no chance for Brian Snyder, an excellent backup catcher here for Philly. Former Met, Montreal Expo, but no chance on an off speed pitch to get Brett Gardner. Those guys that you say play for the Montreal Expos, they're, they're going by the wayside. It's, uh, it's getting further and further away from them being in Montreal. Here's a look at the uh, former MVP. For Charlie Bannon. Jimmy Rollins won that award in 2007. As much as we said, or I said earlier about Utley not really wanting to talk to the media, Jimmy Rollins can be a reporter's dream. <laughs> Very, he's a good guy to talk to. He's, he's got some flair, he's, he's animated, he's chatty, he's talkative. L love interviewing that guy. He, we know with the Phillies and the Mets, he's had some back and forth with the Mets fans. and. Remember the year he said the Phillies were going to win it, they were going to take it, and everybody thought he was going to be wrong, and then the Mets had that collapse, and, and Rollins ended up being correct. Yeah. I bet you'd be asked him tonight, who do you think is going to win the division? He's going to say the guys who won it the last five years. And for the people at home who have never seen Jimmy Rollins up close, when you interview him, it is startling to me how small he is. Yeah. Just for that guy to be able to sometimes have had the power numbers in his career. And to be about 5'8 or 5'9, it's really amazing. Yeah, Jimmy Rollins, when he was scouted in high school, the scout knew that he was only about 5'6, and he said if he turns that in on a report, I'm scouting a guy who's 5'6, the cross checker. You know, the, the scout uh, on the upper echelon is not going to come and see him. So he turned in five foot nine on the report. And Rollins was definitely the best player. But at five foot six, you're not going to get anybody to take a look at you. 
it is more often than not. Yeah. Although there have been cases, Freddie Patex, I think of him. He wasn't more than five foot six. Great player for the Kansas City Royals. Well, if you think about it, Rollins, you know, at one point in its peak, the best player in the National League, you know, and that sort of stature, as you said, that just doesn't happen in any other sport. And, you know, you think in the American League, Dustin Pedroia. Yeah. Similar type build. Best player in the game, MVP type candidate. Gina fouls off another one. In fact, he did win the MVP. 5'8", 180, according to the Phillies media guide. And that season that you're referencing, David, 2007, when he won the MVP, 30 homers, 94 runs batted in, 20 triples. Played all 162 games. That's MVP stuff. And he got paid too. Three two pitch once again to Derek Jeter. And it's low ball four. He draws a walk. So the Yankees have two men on here with one out in the fifth in a 7 7 game. Well, has there been a one, two, three inning in this game? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, bottom of the first. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No. Yeah, the bottom of the first, and that's it. Ever since then, the pitchers have been in deep water. Here's Chris Dickerson, who took over for Curtis Granderson. Granderson had a one for two night, two run homer, and also walked and scored. Dickerson takes over, and this is his first at bat. Checks his swing on a high fastball. That is ball one. One thing I noticed right away with Derek Jeter at first and Brett Gardner at second, he's keeping a very close eye on Brett Gardner. With one out. There they go. The throw to third is not in time. It's a stolen base. So Jeter was right to keep an eye on Gardner. As they both move up and pick up stolen bases. Gardner's now stolen two this inning. Well, Jeter's playing follow the leader, not being held on. So the play only play is a third in Gardner. Good running lead. You see, he never stopped. His feet were moving the whole time. He was bouncing. That was just enough to get the hand in there quicker than the tag. Pitch is high, and the count is now three balls and no strikes on Chris Dickerson. So Rodriguez one pitch away from loading the bases which has been nothing new as far as this game tonight. Here's ball four and the bases are loaded. The Yankees have the bases loaded without the benefit of a hit in this inning. And here comes Rich Doobie to talk to the young right hander. And Rich Doobie's getting his work in tonight. He's been out there several times already. I've heard a line about the. Uh, Pitching coaches what bad pitching staffs where they visit the mound so often that they said they got a shoe contract out of it. <laughs> you know, Rich Doobie, I, I mentioned he was my minor league pitching coach with the Royals, you know, in 1981. Uh, a couple of pitchers came in, a, a guy named Tony Ferreira, who's a, a, a baseball instructor down at the IMG Academy. And uh, I came in uh, along with Mark Doobie's on. Rich Doobie said that was time for him to retire. He became a coach. <laughs> It's a good move for him as uh, he's had a he's had a great career as a pitching coach. We're gonna have a pitch runner at second base. Derek Jeter's out of the ball game. It's gonna be Doug Bernier running in second for Jeter. Jeter had a good night. Reached base three times, scored a couple of runs. Kenny walking two singles. You mentioned earlier, Kenny, the Jeter's counterpart, Rollins at shortstop, obviously signed a free agent deal this year, but the one that I'm following now, interestingly, is is Hamels with the Phillies, because he's the next guy up. And he can be a free agent after this year. And if I'm the Phillies, their bread and butter is their pitching. I'm figuring out a way, whatever it costs you, I think you have to keep Cole Hamels there. A lefty, a former World Series MVP. You want to keep him with Halliday and Lee, and obviously Doobie would be the guy who would work with him. I think the Phillies have to figure out a way to make sure they, they keep Hamels there, too. Here's Eduardo Nunez with the bases loaded. His first at bat of the night. He's been hitting well this spring. It takes a pitch outside again. It's a ball and a strike. We didn't pick our National League Cy Young yet. Huh? You, you know what? I, I was that was my next uh, order of business. But right now, with the bases loaded, this is not a Cy Young situation. <laughs> it's Babe Ruth situation. Yeah. Let's see what Nunez could do here in a 7-7 game. He hits a ground ball to second. This could be two. Galvez tags the runner, throws on the first to complete the double play. And that's it. 
Rodriguez gets out of the jam, and the score remains seven to seven. One out, Gallo spins, and there's the third out. New pitcher in the ballgame for the Yankees as we go to the top of the sixth inning. It's the left hander, Cesar Cabral, and he's in the mix to be the second left hander out of the bullpen behind Boone Logan. And both of these pitchers, Clay Rapata and Cabral, have appeared in nine games apiece. You can see the innings are about even. Cabral has given up 11 hits and 10 in the third, three runs, a couple of walks, 12 strikeouts. Impressive. But Rapata's been impressive on his own. Eight in the third, just three hits, no runs. And uh, both these guys are making a strong bid. Cabral deals. He's got a good fastball and it's in there for a call strike. He's facing Freddie Galvis, the second baseman. The Yankees have made a lot of changes on the defensive end. Like a changeup and a swing and a miss. You got uh, Bill Hall, the veteran now at third base in place of Alex Rodriguez. Doug Bernier came in to run for Derek Jeter. He stays in the game at shortstop. High fly ball to the new right fielder coming on quickly at Zoilo Almonte, and he makes it. That, no, did he catch it? Yes, he did. The umpire held one hand out, now throws up the right hand for the out. So Almonte makes his presence known immediately with a nice running catch. Watch him lay out and hold on. Almonte has been impressive this spring, Jack. He has, Kenny. And you know that play earlier this spring, he had a play where he made a a misplay on a ball, a little blooper that he probably should have let drop for a single. It got past him and ended up the decisive run ended up scoring. So really sharp play by him. He's a guy as you go forward. Nick Swisher is a free agent after this year, and as the Yankees look towards 2014 and. All the talk about how they want to try and keep their payroll under 189. You know, a guy like Almonte might be in the mix. Juan Pierre has had himself a good night. Center fielder Shane Victorino. Base hit for Pierre, his third hit of the ball game. He scored a run. Kenny, we're getting some news yeah. now that uh, Michael Pineda actually felt some soreness in his right shoulder, right, behind his right shoulder. Behind his right shoulder. Didn't tell the Yankees about it before the game, but it, he did report it to the Yankee coaches after he left the game. So, David, you were talking about him cutting the ball and 
And obviously maybe that has something to do with uh, the pain that he was feeling in the shoulder. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're inhibited with some pain in your shoulder, then, then that, would, that would explain, you know, the, the sort of him getting around the ball, his arm dropped a little bit. Pitch to Victorino's in there for a strike, so I'm sure the training staff and the doctors will check that out as quickly as possible, and uh, hopefully it's nothing too serious involving Michael Pineda. Outside to Victorino. We're tied at seven, top of the sixth. Well, without jumping ahead and speculating, you know, maybe it's just normal soreness and uh -huh. whatnot, but it just goes to show you that the reason why Major League teams don't like to make decisions until the last minute because sometimes those decisions make themselves. Sometimes things have a way of working themselves out, and a lot of talk about the Yankee rotation and who's in and who's out, and you know, that's why you wait till the last minute because yeah. something yeah. like this could happen, and we, you know, I don't want to jump ahead and say, you know, Pinet is injured or whatnot, but uh -huh. obviously the report is that he does have soreness in his shoulder, and you know, it, we'll see how that plays out. The old adage is uh, still rings true. You never have enough pitching. Two balls and a strike on Victorino. Uh, check on the speedy Pierre at first base. He's already been thrown out stealing once tonight by Russell Martin. Are we going to get around to our uh, National League Cy Young Award winners? I'll make mine easy. Right. Tim, Tim Lincecum. Uh, I'm, I'm going with one of the odds on favorites, Lincecum. Pierre wanted to go, held up, and now the ball has popped up behind Old Plate. Does Russell Barton have room near the screen, and he makes the catch for the out. That is the second out of the inning. David, you better get yours in. There's two outs now. Well, you know, I, I think in the free agent here, I think this left-hander with Philly, is just Russell Martin's just so athletic back there. No problem there on the, on the pop-ups. Bouncing and throwing. But Hamels. Hamels with the Phillies in his free agent year. He's had a great spring. And he's in a good spot. And the, the question is, is run support, you know, with Utley out, will the Phillies uh -huh. score enough runs in his starts? But I'm picking, I'm picking uh, Hamels. Ball is line foul. Maybe a broken bat for Jimmy Rollins. I'm going to stay with the Phillies, but I'm going to go with Cliff Lee. There are other left hander who is a. I don't know how you could call him the other left hander. He, I think he's their number one left hander and he's going to be number one in the National League this year. I'll go with Cliff Lee. Some of the things he did last year, I, I think he went one month without giving up a run. You could go to the top three starters. In yeah, Philly yeah, you go, could. They're all candidates. Yeah. yeah, but I think one thing that could hurt them is that if their team doesn't score enough. The Phillies last year had 65 wins by three runs or fewer. That showed you how good their pitchers were. And uh, I, I think they can do it again. These are seasoned veterans. That pitch is going back to the backstop. Cabral uncorks a wild pitch. And Juan Pierre is going to move down to second with the go ahead run. Well, who's seen a little bit of everything today? Kenny about Cabral real quickly. Talked to him the other day. And he's very confident about the spring that he's had. He talked about. Fastball slider change. He's felt good about all three pitches. And he said, when he found out that the Yankees had picked him up, he said, Hey, the Yankees are one of the best teams in baseball. If I can make that team, he said, Good for me. And the one thing that he really said helped him was pitching in the Dominican and, and winter ball. He said he came to spring training feeling as if his season had already started because he was used as a closer and used in various roles in the Dominican. And he felt like he came here ready to go. Well, Jack Curry has done Yeoman's work up here in the booth tonight. He's uh, stayed well beyond his uh, usual time here in the booth. And uh, he's going to go downstairs and try and find out more about the Michael Pineda situation. We'll try and update you know, on that as we go along at tonight's ball game. So uh, Jack's going to be all over the place like he usually is and uh, getting the job done. Jimmy Rollins with a 2 1 count. Off speed pitch drops in there for a strike and it's two and two. Great stuff tonight, Jack. Thanks for being with us. Fun to be up here, uh, even though you guys didn't give me a seat. Wait a minute, there's chairs in this booth. Oh, oh wait a minute. No, there's I'm not. Teasing. Sorry, Jack. I like standing. I like standing. Wait a minute. No, we're sorry, Jack. There's not a chair for you, but we'll, we'll put one on requisition for you next time. But all season long, there will be a chair in the studio for Jack Curry. As the Yankees continue the year on, yes, once the regular season starts. That's it, Phillies did not score.
here to top of the six. It's still a seven to seven game. Thank you, Jack Curry. Let's follow the New York Yankees with MLB.com at bet 12 for your iPhone, iPad, Android, WP7, and Blackberry. Get the spring training scores, stats, highlights, live audio, and more. Text that bet to 31826 or visit Yankees.com for details. Bill Hall is going to lead it off for the Yankees in a 7 7 game in the bottom of the sixth inning. Hall took over for Alex Rodriguez, who went 0 for 3 tonight. We've seen a little bit of everything in this game. The pitch is high for a ball. It's one and one. Bill Hall last year with the Giants and the Astros, 62 games. Veteran who's a utility player. He's got some power. Kurt Ball hangs high and it's two balls and a strike. You got to believe Bill Hall at this point is probably playing for the scouts in the stands. You know, even though he, he he's a big league ball player and got a lot of talent, but I, he's just the numbers don't add up here for the Yankees. So the more than likely, you know, he he, he, he probably will end up with a job somewhere. I mean, you know, even, even these Phillies might be looking at him right now. They're a little thin in, in the infield position, and uh, Bill Hall can play outfield as well. So I mean, he, he's a valuable commodity. Just doesn't seem like the numbers are here for the Yankees for him to, to make this team. Up. I think at this stage of his career, he just wants to get to a big league camp and have the opportunity to, open, as you say, open some eyes. Maybe not so much with the team he's with, because the numbers he knows coming to the Yankees, it's sort of like a set team. And now he's, he's in a home run this spring. And I think all the scouts are well aware of what he's been able to do in the past. And right now he's drawn a leadoff walk here in a 7 7 game. And it brings up Eric Chavez, who's driven in the runs, had a good night going. Two for three with a run scored in an RBI. It takes a pitch for a call strike over the outside corner. From Julio Rodriguez. High ball one, one and one. Money with Jack up, but we covered a lot of bases tonight. Went over both leagues. Made our picks. It's a long season. Maybe the people will forget those picks as the season goes along. Yeah, I wasn't real confident with my picks. I yeah, well, well, you know, we we really didn't go over it. We didn't not, not like we discussed it yesterday. What we're going to do tonight? We just decided, look, hey, let's do this. You know, you didn't get a chance to get into all of your saber metrics and all that sort of thing to make your uh, astute picks. Pitches line, towards short. Pete Orr, the new shortstop, falls it in, and there's one down. Kind of cued off the end of the bat of Chavez. And so we got a new shortstop. That's Pete Orr, new center fielder. John Mayberry Jr. You remember watching his dad back in the day with the Kansas City Royals? 
John Cena. His father can hit him a long way. Oh, yes, Big left-handed swinging first baseman. 255 major league home runs for his dad. Had a big long swing and uh, was hitting in a tough home run park in Kansas City. Pitches high for a ball to Russell Martin. Martin's one for one with a couple of walks and a run scored. Having a good spring, hitting at 290. On base percentage, very impressive, over 40%. Throw over the first to check on Bill Hall. That's Lance Nix now playing first base. Before the game, there was a re reunion of sorts between Lance and his brother Jason, who's here in the Yankee uniform. Ground ball towards the hole, and Russell Martin's good night continues. He's on base for the fourth time. Hall stops at second. Martin's two for two with the singles, and now they go with a couple of walks. Some of these hitters are rounding in the form with a week to go. Very quick. Through the zone, short and quick. Russell Martin, just about everything he does is short and quick. Throwing the ball to second base, blocking balls in the dirt. His night is over now. We got a pitch runner at first base. Here's Andrew Jones. Who's one for one with a couple of walks. Outside for ball one. Yankees have two on with one out. Here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Is Addison Maruzak now at first base. Off speed pitch is popped high in the air behind second base. Freddie Galvis, the second baseman, makes the catch and there are two outs. Jones is out in front of that one, got underneath it. Zoilo Almonte will come to, to the plate for the first time tonight. Taking over for Justin Maxwell. Good changeup, swung on and missed strike one. Almonte is a switch hitter. You know how partial to the switch hitters, Cody. As but you I, should be. But I have yet to see him bat right-handed this spring. Every bat I've seen has been from the left side. That pitch is in there for a strike, and it's 0-2. The wheels are spinning for Mr. Girardi. He's checking that lineup card to see if there's anybody else who got to get into this ball game. And where can I put him? Little looper towards left center field. Going over is Mayberry Jr. and he makes the catch, and that's it for the Yankees. They leave two on here at the bottom of the sixth. It's off to the seventh inning. It's Steinbrenner Field. We're off to the seventh in a seven-seven game.
seven seven on our Ford scoreboard to the top of the seventh. Which has been kind of a, a I wouldn't say sloppy, but kind of a wide open game. A lot of walks, a lot of pitches. Clay Rapata, the new pitcher. He'll face Jim Tobin. Swing and a miss strike one. Rapata's specialty is facing left-handed hitters. And he's got a couple of them to face right off the bat. Low and away to Tobin. He's got Posetniks on deck, another left-handed hitter. Posetnik took over for Hunter Pence in right field. You can see Rapata's style, more of a sidewinder, slider, slider specialist, not going to be a power guy. Could be a good compliment to Boone Logan, who is somewhat of a power lefty. Sidearm slider specialist. Tony's gone. Ball dotted the outside corner at the knees. Good pitch. Tony caught looking. Here comes the sidearm slider. You can see very little, not really low underhand, but almost straight sidearm. And a sweep, sweeping effect to that slider. Jim Tomey did not like that call. I'll tell you what, it's no coincidence that Rapata is following Cabral into the ballgame. The Yankees have to make the decision if they're going to use a second left hander, and they're getting a good look at the two candidates in the same game back to back. Here's Pesednik. Well, Rapata, more of a specialist, as I said, you know, his fastball you know, there was like 80 miles an hour, slider in the low to mid 70s. So yep, up to 86 with that fastball, kind of slinging. Cabral probably got a little better stuff in terms of on the power side. See, but Rapato is more of a specialist because right-handed hitters really wear him out. Cabral might be able to get out some righties. That pitch misses outside. Now, right-handed batters are going to see that delivery much better. Something about the... You know, the, when you come in sidearm from the left side or the right side, that the right-handed batters just seem to see it sooner and get a better angle on swinging at that ball. Deals a strike, and it can't levels at two and two to Pesednik, who's uh, trying to make the Phillies as an extra outfielder. Fouls this one off. Pesednik's got to bounce around. Like he's been with the Dodgers, the Royals. He was. It was. You know, a lot of people thought it was between him and Juan Pierre, uh -huh. and Juan Pierre was added to the 40-man roster, which really, you know, recently over the last couple of days, which is a signal that he has made the team. And Pesednik was clearly visibly upset about that, but was reassured by management that he still has a shot. Philly signed him as a minor league free agent. Pesednik's been with Seattle, Milwaukee, the White Sox, Colorado. White Sox again, Kansas City, the Dodgers, and now the Phillies. And his game is speed. He's been a stolen base threat wherever he's been. Yeah, exactly. You know, but Pesednik can run. To obviously, he and Juan Pierre, similar similar style of players. But, you know, when, when you come in on a minor league contract yeah. and towards the end of spring training, and you're added to the 40-man roster, you, yeah. you, you've made the team. And that's what the Phillies did with Juan Pierre. 3 2 pitches outside for a ball. No Pesednik draws the walk and takes his speed down to first base. Here's Hector Luna. So that's the question. Do, do both of those guys get in? Because Juan Pierre is definitely in. Pesednik still waiting. And we told you Pierre with 554 career steals. Sidnick's up there in the stolen base category as well. There's a pitch and it's in there for a strike to Luna. Sidnick with 301 career stolen bases. Throw the first and he's been picked off. Rapata caught him leading. 
And that is the second out of the inning. Well, no doubt Pacetic was leading Rapata with a quick flip throw. See the, the move that looked to home, dead to right. So now two outs, nobody on here in the top of the seventh. And a no one count on Hector Luna. Who fouls the pitch off. Charlie Manuel really likes this guy. Luna's had a pretty good spring. Charlie knows his hitters. He, he, I mean, that was his job before he became a manager. He was a hitting coach and a pretty good hitter, both in the American League and on over in Japan, where uh, he was threatening the all time home run record one year, and they decided about the last week not to pitch to him anymore. Ball is fouled off by Luna. And the count is 0 2. Bella Luna. Pitch is fouled off by Luna. You can't spell lunatic without Luna. <laughs> Not necessarily meaning him. I'm just saying you can't spell that word without the. For the Philly and the New York papers could have a lot of fun with that name, no doubt. Oh yeah. Some headline headline grabbers. Yeah, once in a blue loader. <laughs> High fly ball down the right field line. This is going to stay fair territory. Long run for Almonte, who makes the catch. And that's going to do it for the Phillies here in the seventh inning. It's on to the seventh inning stretch. Why not? It's a 7 7 game. On our Ford scoreboard, it's a 7 7 game as we head to the bottom of the seventh. And quickly, we're going to go down to Jack Curry. He has some news on Michael Pineda. Jack. Thanks a lot, Kenny. I just spoke to Joe Girardi about Michael Pineda, and he talked about how Pineda felt some soreness behind his right shoulder. This was pain that he had even before he started to pitch tonight. He didn't tell the coaches about that or Girardi. I asked Girardi what his level of concern was. He said, yes, there is some concern. 
He also said that you have to impress upon young players. If you're feeling something, any kind of pain, any kind of twinge, you have to let the coach or the manager know. You would probably believe with who Pineda is and the fact that the pain is behind the shoulder, have to anticipate that the Yankees will send him for some kind of test tomorrow. Thank you very much, Jack. So there's the update on uh, Michael Pineda, who felt some soreness in his shoulder even before he started the ball game tonight and really didn't have a good outing as he went two and two thirds, six runs allowed, seven hits, a couple of strikeouts, and three walks. It got roughed up. New pitcher for the Phillies, pitching at Lakewood in A ball last year, Liz Alberto Bonilla. Lakewood, I believe, is there. In southern Jersey. Well, they're eight ball affiliates. This is Dwayne Wise at the plate. And he counted two balls and a strike. Wise took over for Brett Gardner. Wise batting in the ninth spot. The lineup will turn over. Doug Bernier is on deck. All speed pitch. Swung on and missed. Count levels of two balls and two strikes. The young pitcher has a changeup, and it's as, as effective as that pitch was. He's gonna—he won't be an eight ball long. He's gonna move up. Yeah, that had a wrinkle in it. Tried to dot the outside corner with a fastball and missed it. Count is now run full at three and two. Now this will show me something if he throws a three-two changeup to a leadoff hitter. Not nope. instead he delivers look like a slider and it's fouled off. We're at the bottom of the seventh inning in a 7 7 tie now. Ken Singleton David Conk we're giving you the action but uh, we will join the Nets pregame show a little bit later on when the this game is completed. Why is it a high fly ball deep right center field. All the move is a right field for Sednik. He's going to run out of room as this ball disappears over the fence. Dwayne Wise with a home run gives the Yankees an 8 7 lead. That ball just carried on out of here. For a second, I thought Posetnik had a chance to make the play, but I think he runs out of real estate. Sorry, man. We're in the end. Out of the plate, full extension. Well, you could see he gets the bottom half of the ball and gets it high enough. The ball jumps straight up off his bat. Towering home run. Carries, carries, gone. Doug Bernier takes a pitch upstairs for a ball. So Dwayne Wise gives the Yankees an 8-7 to seven lead here in the bottom of the seventh inning. That pitch is in there for a strike. This is Game kind of reminds me of what my former manager Earl Weaver had to say. Maybe there's something that made him a Hall of Famer. They don't have to be pretty, they just have to be wins. That pitch misses outside for a ball. So true. Doesn't matter how you get them, take them, take them and run. In about a week from now, everybody's going to get this game anyway. As the regular season starts, good breaking ball swung on and missed. Counts two and two. Yankees, of course, open up just across the causeway over at uh, Tropicana Field against the Rays. Pitch is hit on the ground to the third baseman. Luna who boots it. Bernier is rounding first. He's going to hit for second. Here's the throw, and it's not in time. Bernier hustling all the way out of the box and give Mick Kelleher some credit for waving him on the second. The first base touch when he hits ground ball in the first field, you just turn and run towards first. Kelleher alerted him to keep on going to second. The Luna with a half moon through the wickets. <laughs> and Bernier, look at him, bust it, just bust it. And right here, he gets the sign for Mick Kelleher. Easily in that hustle double. Chris Dickerson swinging at the first pitch. This one over towards Luna. They're picking on him tonight. This pitch is out of play. This one's out of play. 
Dickerson had a walk his first time. That's, there's a lot of runners going down the line. Might not have gotten that single from the third base, the first base coach, but Mick Keller was very animated in the box. Keep on going. I'm sure he was, uh, we couldn't hear him, but he was making some noise as well. So another runner in scoring position with nobody out. Outside for a ball, one and one to Dickerson. I mean, Ver Vermeer just, you can't do much more than he's done this spring to impress people the way he plays the game. Change ups outside, two balls in a strike. We're looking to see where the Phillies open up the season. They, they open up on the road in Pittsburgh. Taking on the Pirates. Off the end of the bat, fouled at the plate, two and two on Dickerson. Dickerson's made some uh, made a good play in the outfield tonight. Ran down a fly ball off the bat of Jim Tomey. Dove into the gap in the left center. That was a leadoff uh, shot to the gap in the fifth inning. Made a nice running catch. Capable of playing all three outfield positions. Has a strong arm as well. This pitch is live. Broken back down the right field line. It is a fair ball. Bernier's going to score. And Dickerson will get the second. For the ground rule double as the ball bounces into the bullpen. And once again, you got to give a little credit to Ben Keller because Bernier was in scoring position because of the Yankee first base coach. Dickerson, get out of my kitchen, breaks his back, <laughs> but strong enough to muscle it, keep it fair. RBI double. Two runs now for the Yankees this inning. They lead nine to seven. Here's Eduardo Nunez grounded into a double play his first time and he takes a pitch and breaks over the inside corner for a call strike. Good numbers this spring hitting 379 on base percentage of 400. That one misses inside it's a ball and a strike. Very valuable player in the Yankee scheme of things. Eduardo Nunez was impressive last year. 22 steals and just over 300 at bats. That's high and inside. Does the limbo a bit. Gets out of the way and it's two and one. In fact, the late season slump kept him from hitting near 300. He just averaged drop down to 265. Runners off and running towards third, and it's going to be a stolen base for Chris Dickerson. No chance for Brian Schneider. So now he's in third with nobody out. Just taking advantage of a young pitcher. Great jump. Almost to the bag already. No throw. Infield drawn in now. Foul ball off the bat of Nunez. Two managers. Division winners a year ago. Hit towards the middle in the center field for a base hit. Yankees now have a three-run lead as Dickerson tries to get Nunez an RBI. It's a 10-7 game. Nunez continues his good hitting this year. Well, Charlie Mando's got to be looking at the depth of this tricky roster. And be a little, he's got to be a little envious. Love to have this guy on his team. But the Yankees, Dickerson, Vermeer, guys that aren't even going to make the roster. And now you got this kid. Dickerson trots on. But Nunez will make the roster. Yes. Here's Bill Hall takes a pitch outside for a ball. Yankees now with 10 runs on 13 hits. Runner goes. The throw to second. Not in time, but stolen base for Eduardo Nunez. Yankees kind of they're running that offense. Get Tony now.
Well, it's not really Brian Snyder's fault. He's not getting a lot of help out there. Mm -hmm. Tremendous jumps. And a tough pitch to throw, too. Slider down and away. Pitch is fouled off by Hall. Let's see how many stolen bases for the Yankees tonight. If I could add these up. One. Dugger hit two. That's three. Four. Five. Six stolen bases for the Yankees. So it's not all about power. Swing and a miss on a high fastball, and Bill Hall is gone. That's the first out of the inning. In fact, the Yankees have played a diversified offense last year. And it was catching the first six to six. Behind the Rays and the Royals. Top six to six. Great combination. And the home runs there, of course, they were first in the league at home. Here's Gustavo Molina. At one point, the Yankees had a chance to lead the league in home runs and stolen yeah. bases, and it would have been the first team since the 55 Brooklyn Dodgers. 55 was the only year that the Brooklyn Dodgers won the World Series. They beat the Yankees. Made the Dodgers. Well, while they were in Brooklyn. Yeah. Yes, when they were in Brooklyn. That's the Dodgers led the league in home runs and stolen bases that year, 1955. Cody, you're not that old to know that. Off and running to third. The throw is. In time. Finally, the Yankee is thrown out stealing as they catch Nubians attempting to steal third base. Brian Snyder with a little payback. It's about time he's thinking, and that was close. But a good throw by Snyder right there. You got to call him out. He was, he was close. I don't think Nubians got the best of jumps. Two outs now, and Molina takes a pitch inside for a ball, two and one. Payback for Mr. Schneider, the veteran backup. Good guy, Brian Schneider. Good guy to have in your team. Excellent backup catcher. He's got some power, too. Two and two. And as you said, there's not many guys left who actually played for the Montreal Expo. Keep those uniforms. They're going to be worth something. <laughs> I like those hats too. Those old the tri colored hats. hats. Yeah. Count is now full of three and two. Yeah, they were different. <laughs> Who's the mascot up there? Loopy or uh, UP? UP. UP? Yeah. yeah. I tell the story here, but there's two outs in a three two count. It wasn't exactly, you know, like the Philadelphia, you know. Fanatic, no. Fanatic, no. Yeah. There's only one fanatic. Yeah. Three two pitch on the way to Molina. And he hits it off the end of the bat right back to the pitcher. Lisa Belter makes the throw. Yankees score three times with the first run. And the go ahead run came off this swing of the bat by Dwayne Wiles. And home run. So Yankees lead 10 7 at the end of seven.
Time for the game summary presented by Lincoln. As we move to the eighth inning, Yankees with three in the bottom of the seventh to erase a 7 7 tie. Granderson, one for two with a two run homer, a long drive to right center field. Pineda struggled. Two and two thirds, seven hits, six runs, three walks, two strikeouts, 71 pitches. Jeter, two for three with a couple of runs. And we have since found out that Michael Pineda reported that he had soreness behind his right shoulder. Of course, the Yankees are going to check that out. And we'll see where we go from here. As Lance, uh, Lance Nix leads it off in the eighth inning, gets a new pitcher, Chase Whitley. And Nix, ball knocked down for, by Bernier and makes the play. Stayed with it and showed a strong arm to throw out Lance Nix. Robbed him of a hit. As you said, David, this young man's done a lot of things to open some eyes this spring. Well, he's got speed. He's got a great glove. Nice reaction there to bounce back up and get something on that throw. Just seems to, to do a, all the little things well. He's a solid ball player. One up and one down. And that'll bring up Brian Schneider, the catcher. And the obvious story of the night is, is Pineda. And, and, and not only how he pitched, but is he okay? Mm -hmm. So that, that is now the dominant lead story of the game, as you see Chase Whitley's numbers last year at Trenton in double A. Hit hard. Off the glove of Nunez as the ball continues on into right center field for a base hit. So Brian Schneider in his first at bat has a one for one night for him. Nunez with a good effort couldn't flag it down. You can see this Florida ground is so hard. That ball with a little bit of top spin just took off. Joe Girardi mentioned it last night on our telecast about uh, nothing you can do. These Florida fields are hard as a rock. Freddie Galvis with his first hit of the night is now one for four. Whitley has uh, given up three hard hit balls, including two hits. Just a reminder, fans that our New Jersey Nets coverage are out there on the West Coast playing the Golden State Warriors will come up right after this ball game. I know there's some hoops fans out there. Back to the top of the order in Juan Pierre. Juan's big, the big, uh, been the big winner in the hit department tonight. He's got three, three for four. He chops one foul. He's also scored a run and driven in a run. We mentioned the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1955. It's going to be fun to watch the Nets go back to Brooklyn next yeah. year. Yeah, the new arena. And Brooklyn back in the big leagues. At least in basketball. <laughs> I don't think they're going to get the Dodgers back. No, no, it's a little too late now. Dodgers have actually played four games in Los Angeles, and they played in Brooklyn. Pierre lifts a lazy fly ball, and this is going to be out of play. Got ten rows back. The Brooklyn Dodgers. You think it's some of those old Dodgers, starting with Jackie Robinson and Duke Snyder, and Carl Farillo, Gil Hodges, Don Nukem, Roy Campanella. It's a great team. It's ball grounded towards the middle. Good stop by Bernier. Flips the second, not in time. Showing great range to his left. It's going to be another hit for Juan Pierre. He's four for five today. If he hadn't made the team coming into the night, he should. What an outstanding play by Bernier. And he's upset. He thinks he should have made that play. You know, it's remarkable just to get to that ball. This kid thinks he can get everything. Here's John Mayberry Jr. getting his first at bat. Base is loaded in one out. Well, the Phillies have the time runs on base. Ball one. Low and outside. Mayberry Jr. might get a chance to place at first base in the absence of Brian Howard. Hit 10 home runs and had 34 runs batted in his last 55 games last year. He closed with a rush. That's in there for a strike and it's one and one. Former number one draft pick of the Texas Rangers. Go, go, go. 
study political science at Stanford. Doesn't get a change up there, and it's one and two. About six foot six. Fouled at the plate. Now you mentioned his dad, a big, strong, left-handed hitter. Now, big John Mayberry, one of the, one of the, the best players in Royal history. Yeah. Up on the all-time home runs list. And back in the, the glory days of the Royals. It's one of the guys you grew up watching, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It's got to be a thrill for him to see his son. A chance to be an impact player in the big leagues. Another foul ball. Mayberry ended with 15 home runs and just 267 at bats. Spent some time in the minors last year, but uh, Phillies like him a lot as well. He can play the outfield, all three outfield positions, and as I said, going to get a chance to play some first base. Chase Whitley got the first Philly out. Now giving up three consecutive singles. The Phillies have the bases loaded and one out. Bouncing ball, and it's a foul ball down the third base side off the glove of Bill Hall. But it's been 27 hits in this game. Inside, and the count is two and two. This has been a night where the pitchers' ERAs have been roughed up somewhat, and the hitters are starting to get ready for the regular season. Just a week away. Is drill foul this time. Count holds it to it to beginning of spring training. The pitchers always seem to have the advantage. Hitters are not nearly ready. But as you get towards the end of spring training, the pitchers do not make their pitches. The hitters begin to make the pay and show that uh, get closer and closer to opening day throughout Major League Baseball. Mayberry seen just about everything Whitley has. Ground ball towards third. On the back end. Hall steps on third. Throws the first to complete the double play. And Whitley gets out of the jam. The Phillies do not score. As Mayberry grabs it to a 5-3 double play. We play seven and a half innings. And the Yankees lead 10-7.
Friends, it's time to check out the Mazda upcoming schedule. Yeah, we got it for you right here. Let's see what's coming up. On Yes, you've got the uh, Yankees taking on the Mets on the third. But before that, on the first, they're in Miami. The new stadium. I'm going to watch that just to see what the, the new Miami Marlins stadium looks like. Then on the third, they take on uh, the Mets at Fort St. Lucie. Then our final game of the spring. That'll be uh, the final game uh, between the Yankees and the Mets in a home-and-home -home series. That's also on yes. Then we play for real. Still don't leave the state, though. you got to stay in Tampa. Yeah, well, just across the causeway over in St. Pete. New pitcher is Colton Murray. He pitched in Williamsport last year. Just one home run allowed in 30 innings. And he gets a chance. Here to face uh, Andrew Maruzak, who's going to lead it off for the Yankees here in the bottom of the eighth. And the first pitch is uh, in there for a call strike. You know, Addison Maruzak, a local boy, Clearwater yeah. area, actually was a, a student of my uh, minor league roommate, Tony Ferreira, here in Pro Kids Baseball. Addison Maruzak grabs a short high hop for Pete Orr, and he guns it to first, and he's one out. Kind of the popular names of the day, right? Colton and Addison. What happened to David and Tim? Like 80, that's an 80s thing. I mean, all these kids are, some of these kids are born in the 90s now. Francisco Arcia is now batting for the Yankees. Taking over in the DH role. Well, the Yankee minor leaguer invited over to be in tonight's game. Rips one foul in front of Nick Kelleher. That's the benefit of having your uh, minor leagues right down the street. I guess they post a list of the game, the players that should stay and uh, head down the street to Steinbrenner Field. You might get in a ball game tonight. Garcia takes a pitch for a strike and it's one and two. You know you're going to get a, a decent post game meal over here on the big league side. <laughs> get a cup of soup and a carrot stick over <laughs> on the minor league side. I can't remember those days. Yeah, a cup of soup. Maybe a hard boiled egg. You know, you're going to get a real spread over here in the big league clubhouse. You might want to move in. Ball with two strikes at Garcia. And he drills one to the corner. He made his trip over here worthwhile. Grabbed it first on his way for second. And he's going to be in with a stand up double. Francisco Garcia. Yeah, he's a happy young man. Thank you. Yeah, right big back. Turns out. Stay fair, stay fair. Oh. Kicked up some chalk. So our C is at second with one out. And Zoilo Almonte is at the plate. And he fouls one off. <laughs> we got it from A to Z. Addison Dezoyle in this inning. And all stops in between. Way upstairs for a ball from Murray. Phillies have used seven pitchers in this game. A call strike and it's one and two. But for you basketball fans who are waiting patiently, the next game will be coming up right after. We are finished here at Steinbrenner Field.
It's kind of been a long game tonight. We get 28 hits in a ball game and 17 runs. We've been some men on base constantly. Bouncing ball towards the middle. Or oh, a bad hop goes through his legs. RC is headed home. He will score on the throw to the plate. El Monte goes to second. It's now 11 to 7 Yankees. You know what? I'm going to give him a base hit on that. It took a bad hop on Orr. Orr had it lined up, and the ball went through his legs. But I think it might have hit the lip. We'll see. Yep, hit the lip of the grass and the dirt. And took a, a bad hop through the legs of the shortstop Pete Orr. Wow, they're giving him an error. It shouldn't be an error. We had it all sized up and then the shift of the hop off the lip. Here's Dwayne Wise hit a home run his last time, huh? Wise jumped one over the uh, right center field fence. A ball and a strike. This is one of those nights where you didn't want to pitch. Something was going to happen. One ball and two strikes on Wise. And yet another reminder for you basketball fans that the Nets are out there. They're in Golden State taking on the uh, Warriors. And they'll be uh, on yes right after we are done here at Steinbrenner Field. This ball's hit well to the right field. Does Dwayne Wise have another one? Back goes Pacific to the wall. Looks up. This one is gone. A two run home run for Dwayne Wise. It's now a 13 to 7 Yankee lead as Wise is two for two tonight with two home runs. He's homered in consecutive innings. Well, have a night, Dwayne Wise. Another ball up in his letters, up in his eyes almost. Another towering home run. Here's Bernier, and he takes a pitch, and it's inside for a ball. There's El Monte at second. Ah, this not staying in. <laughs> so the Yankees have roughed up some of the Philly minor league pitchers who have come across from Clearwater. The Yankees have scored six runs in the last two innings. They now lead 13 to seven. Hmm, a bad start to the game. Anytime you spring training games and you try to try to make a reliever start the game. <laughs> <laughs> the Philly started the game with a reliever, Bastardo. It's not a good sign. <laughs> There's a walk to Vernier. You know what? I didn't think of that, but you could be right. Bastardo was probably the Philly's best pitcher. He faced four batters and got them all out. Applebaum came in early in this game. He got hammered. It was all backwards. All the relievers pitched first. They were they were out of sorts. <laughs> And on the Yankee side, you know, on the series note, uh, yeah. Pineda probably should have been out there if he felt stiffness in his arm, as he yeah. said, according to Jack Curry. And his right shoulder behind his right shoulder, it is the story of the night. Michael Pineda, the Yankees great young pitcher that was acquired in this trade with Seattle for Jesus Montero. Said that he was hurting before the game, but didn't say anything. And waited till after the game, had a rough performance and. We, we will await further word, but it is definitely the story of the night. Pineda with a sore shoulder. No balls in a strike on Chris Dickerson. One and one. You know what, David? Maybe the pressure of making the rotation led to silence. Yeah, without a doubt, that's probably what happened. He, he wants to be impressive, trying to impress his new teammates and his manager, Joe Girardi, and 
know, as Joe Girardi said, you, you got to be honest. You, you got to tell us if you feel something in your shoulder. It's too valuable. He's too well, valuable. Not only shoulder, anywhere. Anywhere, yes. Dickerson fouls one back. But you're probably right. He's feeling he's feeling the pressure. He wants to, you know, he wants to impress his teammates, make the rotation, and hopefully he didn't do too much damage to his shoulder. Tomorrow morning, Pineda is scheduled for an MRI. Check things out. That's outside for ball. Three balls and two strikes now on Dickerson. Yankees have a man on with one out. They've scored three runs here in the eighth. And he has struck out on a 3 2 pitch. Two down. Fans' copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the New York Yankees. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. Colton Murray, the seventh Philadelphia pitcher. And right now he gets to face Eduardo Nunez. Like a slider, but it was uh, in there for a strike. One for two, an RBI single and a stolen base for Nunez. That one got away, and it's a ball and a strike. And it's in there for a strike, and it's uh, one and two on Nunez. Nunez has bounced back from a, an injury this spring. He was hit by a pitch in, I believe, it was one of the first two games of the spring training session. The first game, in fact, against the Phillies, missed some time while it was popped up and out of play behind home plate. And you're wondering how he was going to come back for a while. It was kind of touch and go. Every time he tried to swing it bat, his hand would bother him. But he has come back with a vengeance. Been hitting well, near 400 in limited action this spring. Looks like he's ready to go. That was kind of a weak hack, but he fouled it off. <laughs> Even he's got to laugh at that one. This is a little unconventional. <laughs> What you call a jelly whip, jelly leg, and then a phone booth swing. <laughs> two balls and two strikes. Had everybody laughing. Like trying to swing a bat in a phone booth. You know? <laughs> Bring those arms in tight. Full count now on Nunez. We've had a lot of full counts today, too. Runner goes, pitches on the way, ground ball towards second. Galvis, been very steady at second base tonight, makes the play. But the Yankees scored three more times. Last chance for the Phillies coming up.
leading the Philadelphia Phillies 13 to 7 as we go to the top of the ninth inning for you basketball fans waiting patiently. We'll be getting to out to the West Coast where the Nets are playing the Golden State Warriors as soon as this game is over here at Steinbrenner Field. The Yankees have a new pitcher in the ball game, Ryan Pope. Those are his numbers last year at Triple A. And he's in charge of getting the last three outs here against these Phillies. And then we can turn it over to basketball. Uh, Pete Orr is up there and he takes a pitch for ball one. That levels the count of the ball with a strike. 29 hits, 20 runs, and 29 hits in this game. As David Cohn said, it's all the fault of the Phillies by starting a reliever. There's a line drive to the shortstop, and there's one out. Bernier makes the play. Luis Martinez will come up. He takes over in the DH role that was held down by Jim Tomey. Tomey had a double in three at bats to go along with a walk. And the first pitch is in there for a strike. And they say Martinez this is Montañez, Luis Montañez. He spent some time at the big leagues. Three twenty one last year in Triple A. Spent some time in big leagues with the Baltimore Orioles. That pitch is low. So Cody, you would not call this a textbook pitcher's night. Definitely not. We got it backwards from the start, and uh, you know it's. You start seeing pitchers that have numbers in the 90s on their back at this point in the game. I mean, you've never seen anybody wear a number 100, so you know 94, 96. I'll tell you what, the Yankees keep retiring numbers. You're gonna, you're gonna get into triple digits. Means a lot for Ryan right here. This is Ryan's hope for Ryan Pope right here. You get a chance of pitching in the ninth inning. Tony, you're going back in time. <laughs> he walks Martinez, so there's one on with one out. What was that? A soap opera back in the day? Back in the day, that's right. Long running. Uh -huh. uh, any that any stars break in on that soap that uh, of note? Oh yeah, you know I think maybe Meg Ryan was on that soap. Oh okay. Point. Yes. That was before Harry met Sally, right? That was much much before. There's a pitch for a strike to Posednik. Trying to think of anybody else. I didn't really watch that show. This pitch is hitting the air to left field. Dwayne Wise. He's had such a good night, he's going to have no problem with this. Makes the catch for the out. It's out number two. The hitting star of the game right there, Dwayne Wise. A couple of towering home runs and back to back at bats. Good time to have it towards the end of spring training. Don't know if he's going to make this club, but a lot of people watching. This is the type of game you get once in a blue Luna. It's kind of fitting that he could be the last out here. <laughs> First pitch is a strike to Luna. He's had one at bat and flying out to right field. Ryan Pope trying to retire the Phillies here tonight. Then give the Yankees a 13 to 7 win. Wise, he's not going to get there. The ball hops over the fence. So Luna refuses to make the last out. And he has himself a double. So now the Phillies have runners at second and third with two down. And basketball is going to have to wait a little bit longer. Just a reminder basketball on the way shortly. Lance Nix will come to the plate. Nix grounded out to short his first time. He was robbed of a hit by Doug Bernier.
We're taking away time from Ian Eagle and uh, Mike Fratello. You don't want those two guys mad at you. <laughs> The one pitch is line base hit by Bill Hall. The Phillies are going to score a couple of runs. Lance Nix has himself a double. And it's now a 13 to 9 ball game. Phillies refuse to go quietly here in the ninth inning. Catcher Ryan Schneider. Give Nix a couple of runs batted in. Well, Nick's was the happiest guy in the house. Charlie, Charlie's worn out. He's hungry. <laughs> Here's Brian Schneider. And he's, he's got his hitter swinging at the first pitch. He fouls it back. <laughs> It'd be easier to count the innings where runs have not been scored in tonight's game. That's the pitch outside for a ball. Well, we understand uh, we get a note from the truck that Cesar Cabral, who pitched in tonight's game, is going to get an MRI left elbow pain. So we've had a couple of pitchers come up with arm problems tonight. Michael Pineda, of course, the big story. Soreness behind his shoulder. The Yankees are going to send him for an MRI tomorrow. Now Cesar Cabral come up with elbow problems. Phillies down to their last strike. One and two on Brian Schneider. Two and two on the pitch in the dirt. Well, a tough break for Cesar Cabral. Yeah. The young lefty that's so impressive this spring was really in the running. Maybe the front runner to be the lefty out of the, the second lefty out of the pen, although Craig Rapata's had a great spring as well. Ground ball towards second. This should do it. Nunez up with it. Throws on the first for the final up. And the Yankees do win this by a score of 13 to 9. That'll do it from here at George Ed's Town Brown Field in Tampa, Florida. For David Cohn and Jack Curry, I'm Ken Singleton saying so long, everybody. The Yankees win this by a final score of 13 to 9.